AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk. AT&T delivers more of what your business needs. Instant communication, up to 1,000 contacts, plus a broad array of devices and platforms. Visit att.com slash enhanced ptt3 to get your business started with a free Samsung Rugby 3. You push to talk, we pushed it further. AT&T, rethink possible. Limited time offer, free phone on new activations only requires two-year commitment to eligible voice and data plans plus activation of AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk service. You want to talk right down to that in a language that everybody here can easily understand. And now it's time for the voice. 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 I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, stick your head out and yell, Hate it, the voice of Ocala with Buddy Martin. You know I don't speak Spanish. In English, please. Look in my eyes, what do you see? The cult of personality. I know your anger, I know your dreams. Hello, welcome to a Wednesday edition of The Voice of Ocala. Buddy Martin with you as we are every weekday at 3 o'clock, 3 to 6, right here on The Source, 5 o'clock course, the sports page. And today's program is jam-packed with guest information. Hope you're doing well today. We uh, always like having you tune in and, of course, call us when you can. Today's program features several guests. One newcomer from uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, his daughter, Emily Cummings, up-and-coming writer, who will be taking the place of Kevin Reed. That will be an upgrade right there with uh, uh, Emily By coming 100%. up for Kev- Kevin Reed uh, on the Power Plant segment. Uh, i got an author named Michael C. Mason who's written a book about turpentine and uh, the <laughs> turpentine stills and the steamboats coming up the Lackawaha River. Historical book of Marion County. Michael will join us in the studio about 4.30. John McLeod. Councilman McLeod will be in to talk about what he has learned about the Silver Spring situation, and we'll get his take on that. And then at 5 o'clock, we go around the water cooler with Tom James. A lot of sports news today, guys. Tom, two new coaches in the National Football League. Chip Kelly reversing his feel in a very big, surprising announcement. Chris Mortensen scooped everybody on that story. Uh, And he is going to the Philadelphia Eagles after all. And uh, probably not quite as big of a, a surprise, but a big one. A guy who's been off the radar screen, Mark Tressman. Ha! <laughs> Is Usually, good? buddy, when you fire your coach, it's because you think you can upgrade. I don't know if this is an up upgrade over Levy Smith. Uh, he's, he, you know, he's a cane now, you know. So I didn't uh, even know that. Yeah, uh, he's he, still not Levy. He, he coached some awful good quarterbacks at Miami, and he is he's coached around the league a long time on the West Coast. I mean, I mean, in college football, and I believe he's been in the Canadian Football League for a while. Yeah, la- la- for the uh, last nine six years. years. Nine last, years I think well, two thousand six was the last time he was in the NFL. Yeah. So uh, anyway, he's a, he always regarded as a good quarterback coach, but the head coach of the Chicago Bears, that was a surprise. Do so, they have a good quarterback there? Well, we're going to find out <laughs> whether Jay Cutler can survive. With a lot of speculation, we'll talk about that during the around the water cooler time period at five o'clock with our friend Tom. And uh, meanwhile, today. Uh, you know, guys, uh, of course, a lot of news today and, and regarding the, the gun control issues and lots of uh, comments about that. I, I've been getting f- comments and questions from friends and callers and <laughs> about gun control. And I've decided to make a statement about that today and that and other issues. We've never dodged an issue on this show of any kind and never will. And even when the outcome or information is contrary to our own opinion, we still will take it on and still air it. So we don't dodge anything. We're not trying to cover anything up. Or we have no agenda regarding those kinds of things. But there's certain things, it's like beating your head against the wall. And you ultimately get nothing but pain in your head. And I'm not saying that these are not important issues. I just don't know what's to be gained by long Dialogues and hot debates about subjects. It's bad enough we've had the fiscal cliff and we had hard we had a hard time getting both sides of that. We can't sometimes get to both sides of any story because people don't want to come forward. But I am just not equipped to handle a major debate on gun control. And 
we, I'm willing to talk about it, and we have uh, on this program a lot. And it's significant what the president did today, whether you agree with it or whether you don't. It was, just, it was a milestone. And we all know this much, that something has to be done. Now, what that something is, I don't know. I hear all these things about background checks and people getting licensed and all this sort of stuff. And, yeah, and I think that's going to help some. But here's the problem. Every time the president makes a reference to gun control, he sells another 5,000 guns. And because people are saying, well, there you go. That's the government. They're taking our guns away, you know, and they go out and load up on some more and as many automatic weapons as they can get. So is that really helping gun control? Uh, I'm not saying the president shouldn't do it. Of course the president should do it. Uh, but anything anything that Obama says regarding gun control or whatever, it's just automatically flagged as something that's evil and, uh, you know, what have you. Uh, and, and so it was the reason that Joe Biden was the one who actually introduced the legislation. Uh, anything that comes from Biden is, is not nearly as damaging or offensive or all over the top as it is from Obama. Uh, and I think he tried to soften the blow. But anyway, that happened today. I've had one very intelligent guest I know contact me and said he, he could come on and talk Second Amendment. I'm considering that possibility. I've had another friend of mine, you know, I know, with a friend at Starbucks who wants to know why we don't talk about it. And I said simply this. When, when we had our good friend Brad Rogers on, Brad Rogers made a statement. He said, I've only written one editorial in the Star Banner on gun control, and I've never written about abortion. And, and why do you think that is, Tom? I know exactly why it is. It's because people tend to let their emotions speak for them, <clears throat> and they get angry too easily. They don't think objectively. They don't talk objectively. Objectively, All they do is let their emotions take over. And when emotions take over, mean, angry people, uh, uh, you know, that's what happens. People become mean and angry. And... That's just not something that this is the medium for, in my opinion, and I think in your opinion, too. Well, it brings out the worst in us often. It isn't to say we shouldn't have emotional debate or healthy debate. Uh, one thing about sports I like is you can actually do that you know, without you know, wanting to kill somebody, uh, for the most part. And I think uh, I think we'll tackle it a different way. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it as we get certain guests, and, and, and we'll, we'll talk about it. But I don't want to have that ready for a debate on gun control. I'm... If I'm wrong, you can always interview me, uh, e email me at buddy at WOCA.com and tell me. I'm willing to present your point of view on this program, which will probably call it the voice of Ocala. And as far as abortion goes, I just don't know where to start on that. I don't know where to start. I don't know that I'd ever reach a – as Brad said, we won't move the needle one way or the other a, 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 a bit, not a, not a single bite. It won't, it won't, it won't move one bit what we say on this program. So, will we duck it? No, we won't duck it, but we will uh, We will endeavor to tell it a different way. So, that's just my thought. Just for people who have said, hey, how come you don't talk about these issues? There's a comment. Now, there's other things we do talk about, and we do talk a lot about relationships, and some people aren't always happy about that either. But uh, we'll endeavor to continue to do that. Today on the program, as I said, we'll talk with Emily Cummins. There's a new initiative at the, at the power plant in Ocala. And Emily's going to bring that to us. Uh, power plant's a good thing. They're, they're trying to bring jobs to our community. Um, by the way, a very interesting letter this morning in the Star Banner, which uh, I should have brought, and I don't want to read the whole thing, but it addressed an issue that Laurie Martin Gregory wanted to address last week, and I didn't really know if I wanted to address it. And in reality, I think there's a point to be made there, which is in all of our talking about the horrendous crimes committed by people like the 20-year-old woman who shot the baby, that we have absolutely zero sympathy for the woman who did it. And, and, and I don't, but by the same token, what got her into that state? How did she get into that mental state? And until we address those things, we're always going to have people, crazy people with guns. If we don't start addressing that bigger issue, and, of course, it's regarding uh, mental health and drugs, whatever. Uh, it, it's never going to get any better. That's just my thought for the day. You All know, right. You, before you go, you and I don't necessarily agree a lot on our, our take on stuff like gun control and everything. We it, People don't hear what we say off the air. But you and I, it's, it's no secret between us that we don't agree with each other a lot on this issue. But what we do agree on 
Is that there are bad loopholes in this issue that need to be filled? And the president took a step today to do some of that. And what you just said speaks volumes. We need to seriously take a look at mental illness and drug use and the access to any weapons, guns, knives, anything, by people who have problems. And we need to fix the root problem of their mental illness. That, without a doubt, I don't know if that's fixable. But but I think we have it to address be identified. It. We have to identify it and address it in some fashion, and that is all combined with the problem of guns, which is also guns, part of the problem. knives, anything. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back, and I'll tell you uh, a couple of uh, tweets, quotes, and a letter for Doctor Buddy. We'll get on that next. <laughs> hey, this guy just won't go. This Doctor Buddy guy, and uh, some people wish he would. So that coming up next, and of course in the sports hour. Lots of talk about new NFL coaches and sports goings on and NBA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right here on the program. Call the voice of Ocala on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and JJ LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. Well, the new year is upon us, and that means getting to those forgotten projects that you promised you would. So whether you're tackling a small honeydew list or building the Taj Mahal, Sunbelt Rentals will help you get the job done right with the right tools. From carpet cleaners to excavators, Sunbelt Rentals has what you need. So what are you waiting for? Get it done. Rent it now. From Sunbelt Rentals, located on Highway 27, just a half mile east of I-75, or visit sunbeltrentals.com. Get it done. Rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals. What you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Casual activities like taking a walk or listening to your favorite music increases the activity in the areas of the brain associated with concentration and decreases the levels of the stress hormones that limit memory. When people suddenly realize they have very different expectations, it can lead straight to that post-holiday breakup. The longer we sit, the greater are odds of developing deadly diseases ranging from diabetes to heart disease. On the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. 
Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Look who just walked in the room, Joel Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joel, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joel, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. This is Tom Schmitz live in the WOCA studios with this news break brought to you by the Country Club of Ocala. Tuesday is day one of this year's horse sale at the OBS, and the news is good. Gross sales totaled $3,290,400 for 196 head. That included both the preferred session of horses of racing age and horses of racing age session. That was an increase of nearly 46% from last year when the combined session saw 146 heads sold for $2,307,200. The day's top seller did not factor into the preferred session's gross, which jumped more than 400000 from 2012's comparable sale. This news break was brought to you by the Country Club of Ocala. If you'd like to sp schedule a special event at one of Ocala's premier facilities, call 237-6644 today. It's just a terrible segue, but uh, I'll, I'll kind of ease into it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ease into this piece of kiwi. Yeah, I see that. Meanwhile, uh, you could be eating horse meat if you're buying a hamburger. Mm. Uh, speaking of horses uh, over in Ireland, I'll tell you about that story <laughs> in just a moment, but uh, that's one of the things they're investigating me to see. Apparently, it's been found to be in quite a few products over in uh, England and Ireland. So That's not good. Now, we're going to talk about food and about uh, consumption of food and, and all that stuff. Let's first, let's talk about this team of trainers that you apparently are bringing into the <laughs> bank on Friday that gets bigger all the time. Now, you got three right. trainers I have, a, I, have a, I have a training team. And, I, by the way, I saw Carrie today as well. Mm -hmm. And Carrie gave me a high five and said, good job for what you're doing. Now drink more water and hush whining. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> so but so Megan, don't whine. Make it positive today. Meg, Shannon, and Katie are all coming to uh, Community Gazette Day to tell you just about how bad they're abusing me and mm -hmm. Actually, today, I discovered Pilates, and is somebody that, told me is Pilates that Italian is food. Be, what is that? No, no, it's it's a it's a workout from inside out. You work the inside of your body out, and what it's stretching, it's stretching and stuff like that. It just says, "What does that mean?" Inside yeah, out. Inside out. Uh, well, we'll ask Meg that Friday. <laughs> She'll explain it to us. All right. See, Chris, Tom doesn't know. He heard her talking about that's it. That's what she said. That's what. She, that's how she <laughs> described it. That. That's how she described. It. She said it's from working from your diaphragm out. All right. So she said no whining. She yeah. Said, this has to be a positive thirty seconds. No, no. It, it was great today. I, I. It was actually a very difficult workout. You're for in me. a better mood today than you were yesterday. I, I feel I have energy today. It's amazing how you work out. And you have energy, you don't work out, and you're tired. You think it would be exactly the opposite. JJ, how long have we been doing this show? A year and a half. Did you ever think you'd hear Tom say that what he just said? No. No. But no. I mean it was good it was very difficult today. I was doing sit up and push up drills and the old up downs from my football mm -hmm. career. So all you all the kids out there that I know listen to the show that when I coached them at Pop Glad Water, to see you have Yes, I had to do up downs today. There you go. And uh Mind you, the girls have toned it back. It was supposed to be an hour a day, and they've toned it back to 30 minutes until I could take longer than that. All right. But I, I'm, I'm sticking with it, and uh, the Pilates helped me today because it stretched me out after a hard workout. And as you see, I'm enjoying a nice sure. fruit plate here. And sharing. They're, they're, KMF is KMF is amazing. They, 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 and they got everything, too, buddy. They got... Not only they got personal training, they got, we've had the Tai Chi guy on. Mm -hmm. They got Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. They got classes, individual personal training. Yeah. Lisa Midget and the girls over at KMF. They, well, we'll they, see if they can perform this miracle. This remains to be seen. <laughs> JJ and I are still a little skeptical. We'll see if it works out. By the way, speaking of uh, horses and horse meat, you found this, uh, found this uh, horse meat in, over in England and in Ireland. 
and, and several of the products also contain pig DNA. Mm. Okay? Are you telling me I've got pig, I've got some pig and some horse in my hamburgers? Which is the problem with hamburgers? You never really know what goes in this the mystery. ground meat. meat. You never know. It's what, which to me is even more reason why you go to the grocery and you get great top round or whatever. You grind it, get it ground, and you, you know what you're getting there for sure. When you're eating hamburgers out, I don't know. It's a little shaky. But apparently, the horse meat is eaten quite a bit around the world. In France, Mexico, Central Asia. But in the countries like Ireland, it's not in their culture, nor is it in our culture here, naturally. But uh, I don't know. I guess if you really were starving to death and you had the availability of horse meat, you'd eat it and not say anything about it. But I'm not I'm not into eating horse meat myself. That's no okay. uh, I'm we, we're in agreement again, buddy. Yeah. I can't say I wouldn't like it. Yeah, I've never, well, had. never have eaten it. But do, but does it bother you the idea you eat you eating and meat up yeah, on a horse? Look, not really. No, I'm not. I'm no. not. I've never had sewer rat either. But I know I ain't eating it. Okay. okay. So. <laughs> it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers y'all. I guess it doesn't. Have you eaten uh, venison? Yes, and I love. Oh, I've it. eaten a lot of venison. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. See, and I've eaten a sort lot of, of alligator. Similar animals. So you're okay with Bambi? You don't mind eating? Her. No, I didn't. Yeah, I blow Bambi. Well, I won't because I don't hunt anymore. But Bambi get her head blown right off. Oh, that's great. Cats is where I hope children are listening out there. You know, I'm just saying. That. Yeah. I don't do the cat thing. I got no problem with shooting yeah. Bambi. All right, that's JJ. You mentioned the cat thing. Let's talk about that for a second. That was an awful oh, story. No. Right. You don't go into go elaborate detail about it because it's just a little. It was offensive. actually a good story about an awful yeah. situation. It yeah. finished well. Well, uh, yesterday in China, there was a, a massive truck carrying a thousand cats. In 40 cages, 25 cats to a cage. And uh, I guess it ran out of gas or it broke down. I hope this is. I hope people know where this is going. It's going to a restaurant. That's oh. where they were going. Yeah, yeah they were, the cats were not going oh. to a good end. But however, when the truck broke down, what, what happened, JJ? Truck breaks down. I guess they have a social media website over there that's similar to Twitter, and all these people notice the cats. So whoever was in that area spread it out through social media network, and a bunch of people helped go get all the cats and the crates. They, the cats, saved, all they the saved all the cats and cats. gave them homes and everything. <laughs> but but it, I guarantee those restaurants will still be getting cats from somewhere else. You know, here's the thing. That reinforces the worst stereotype about Chinese restaurants, unfortunately. That's always the, that's always the standard joke, right. you know. And you don't like, you think you, don't, you think that happened in this country. But when I was in living in up in a place called Chappaqua, right next to Mount Kisco, there was a nice little pond outside right behind a Chinese restaurant. Our favorite Chinese restaurant, which we went to, a very <laughs> good Chinese restaurant. And there were always ducks on that little pond out there, you know. Right. Not the same thing as cats, granted. Right. You always make jokes about it. Well, lo and behold, the chef did get arrested for taking killing some of the ducks and in, in the uh, pond. He, yeah, in the pond behind. Them. So <laughs> I guess uh, the, duck is such an oily meat. I don't even like. it. I don't like it. Okay, enough about food. That'll turn your stomach. You know, um, I've got a couple of things today on Doctor Buddy, which I'm going to throw out there. Um, people are just blowing you yes, up with this Doctor really Buddy. Kinda, aren't they? I don't know if people are getting tired of it or what, but anyway, we get so many thoughts and. Uh, Here's today's thought. I'm not going to go and elaborate anything, but I thought this was pretty good. I'll share this with you for guys like JJ and Tom and you bastards. Sometimes we expect more from others because we'd be willing to do that much for them. Yeah. A little kindness, is right? All right. A little yeah. thought there. And here's my quote today for a Dr. Buddy quote. It comes from, of all things, all people, Socrates. My advice to you is get married. If you find a good wife, you'll be happy. If not, you'll become a philosopher. (laughs) (laughs) Now, here's the final thing I've got from... Remember the thing we talked about, courtship? Yes. At the end of courtship, well, that thing's still resonating. It's still bouncing around on several websites. It was on Huffington Post today. And Emma... Gray from the Huffington Post responded to JJ. What was that story about? Remember courtship? Remember what it was about? Are you talking about the girl that acted like she was? No, no, no. He's, courtship. Where, where it, now it, instead oh, of meeting at the yeah. sports uh, bar and right. saying let's hook up and go back and watch movies and have beer, and that courtship is you know and romantic interludes are still needed and that women want to be courted, right? 
You did remember, J.J. Yes, they want money okay. to be spent on that. If it did, I wasted my whole time on Dr. Buddy on you. No, J.J. Did. said, you heard what he said to anybody. He gets it. Women want you to waste money on them. Yeah, I, heard, you heard I didn't say said. waste, spend. All right, here's what, you'll probably like this response from this writer, okay? A couple things, she said. Number one, are we seriously mourning the loss of first date fancy dinners? Call me and my friends crazy. I don't know any single woman, women, who are bemoaning the fact that men aren't taking them out to elaborate meals on a first date. First dates are trying for people, seeing if you can match two people, and deciding whether you'd like to explore the connections further. So there you go. There's one woman who didn't think it's necessarily a friend. Number two, she said, point. Women aren't crying in their living rooms waiting to be asked out, okay? According to the New York Times, women (laughs) in their 20s these days are lucky to get a last-minute text to tag along. Their entire tone of the piece points to the conclusion that women are clutching their pearls, waiting by their phones to be pinned. In reality, most women, and I know, would readily write off a man if he continually asked her out last minute to hang out with his friends. And they there, would. And there are plenty of dudes out there. There are plenty of dudes out there who are far more proactive. Finally, you made this point, JJ. Dating has changed. And that's a good thing. I'm not saying this is a woman now. I haven't wished my date would just pick me up, pick up the phone and make a plan instead of engaging me in an extended texting dance or curse the entire institution of online dating. However, I'm certainly not waxing nostalgic for a simpler time when men pull women's chairs out, picked up every bill, and exercised total control over the dating process. There you go. You agree with that, guys? I, I think that that girl was spot on. I think a lot of times women feel like if a man makes all the plans and does that, women now think that that's a man that shows freakish need to control. But didn't Angie say yesterday she sort of liked that? She thinks there should be more, a little more effort put into Angie's the Angie's been married for a long time. So, oh, oh there, <laughs> now there's a nice thing to say for a woman. Okay. She's going to beat this your is, head this in. Is, this is, we're talking about people that are dating, that she are just is, starting to meet each other. Let me just say this. This is a woman's view, okay? Angie's not any older than you Angie are, okay? and Clint have been together since high school. But nonetheless, like, what do they know? she's a female. <laughs> but what they do don't they know, know anything about that. Well, they don't know anything about it. Well, I'm just saying, like, they love each other. They've always loved each other. Okay. You know what I'm saying? See, they haven't had to go out in the world and deal with everybody else's crap. Sometimes, J.J., you assume things. You just don't know. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's a point of view. Now, here's the final thing. Dr. Buddy, get off the relationship thing and get back to the real issues like gun control <laughs> and more sports. Anonymous. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> there you, go. you can't please them all, can you? We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll have Emily Cummins when she gets... She's a young, single female. We'll talk to her about this. And also, she's a big announcement to make about the power plant. Coming up next, right here in the Voice of Ocala. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The Source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we, you know, we, we, we have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the, the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little something for everybody. I mean, we, have, we obviously have a world-class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic-sized swimming pool. We have, the, uh, we have a fitness center that's, that's second to none. And we have uh, state-of-the-art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. Hello, I'm Dawn Lovell, lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great 
way to get ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals, located on Southwest 10th Street, just off Route 200 in Ocala, and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information, call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. Yes, George. I can't get the car started. I need to get to Devon Self Storage in Ocala to unclutter the garage. Oh, George, don't worry. Devon Self Storage in Ocala has a free move-in truck now. Just ask for John or Michael. They will gladly help you. George, you better call 352-873-0777. Oh, thank you, Annalyn. Say hi to Gordy for me. Yes, I will, Annalyn. George, with Devon Self Storage in Ocala, your life just got easier. Yes, Annalyn, yes. Digital Graphics Reborn, Phoenix Promotional Solutions. When you need vehicle wraps, banners, t-shirts, window graphics, you need to call Phoenix Promotional Solutions at 368-2404, 368-2404. When you need building signs, vehicle wraps, yard signs, realty signs, business cards, you need to call 368-2404, 368-2404. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, Digital Graphics Reborn. Reborn. They've served our country. They've kept us free. And they need your help. We're sitting in Veterans Park. You can't sit here not realizing that you're surrounded by heroes. There are a lot of heroes in our community. A lot of heroes, unfortunately, are not in good financial shape. They're hurting both physically and financially. We step in and help directly. Our role is to reach out to them. We're there to help the veterans. We do counseling. We do outreach. Sometimes it's just coming into the office and sitting down and saying, hey, I've got a problem, and you're talking to another veteran who understands that problem. Everybody who works for the Vets Helping Vets are awesome, and they are so kind to everybody. They're like my second family. They really are. They have been there during the holidays. I have gotten unexpected visits, assistance. Vets Helping Vets of Marion County needs your help. Call today, 352-433-2320, and pledge your support to Vets Helping Vets of Marion County. It really has been a blessing. garden and we've got a show for you called you've got a garden with your host master gardener carol ann baldwin carol ann answers your questions about your flowers your veggies your grass your trees even questions about your bugs and she's only on woca so don't miss carol ann baldwin and you've got a garden each tuesday from 9 a.m to 10 a.m right here on woca the source woca this is Tom Schmitz live in the WOCA studios with this news break brought to you by Kinetic Motion Fitness. HDR Engineering, a consultant hired by the state, is changing the timing of traffic signals at 20 intersections in Ocala. The changes affect 18 signals along State Road 200 from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to Southwest 60th Avenue. The lights at Southwest 17th Street and Southwest 19th Avenue Road and Southwest 27th Avenue and Southwest 20th Street are also being adjusted. The work began on Wednesday and will take up to a week to complete. This news break was brought to you by Kinetic Motion Fitness, where the fun is on, where the focus is on fun. Find them at kmfocala.com. Hi, right, welcome back to the program. Joined now by. A little more class in the uh, studio here. We got uh, four slugs, five slugs, five guys, four, five do nothing guys, and we got um, we have uh, my friend Emily Cummins who brings a little class to the group. Hi, Emily. Hey, how are you? Good, and you're just getting off the road. You've been in, you're finishing up University of Florida as a senior. I am. Yeah, and uh, you're you're working in a program now on innovation, Ocala. Here's an interesting story about Emily. I just want to tell us. Uh, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so, I was looking through Twitter, and I happened to see this very pithy comment about something regarding faith. And I didn't pay attention to who wrote it, and I said to my wife, this is very good. I really think this is really a good point this person made. And I actually began to answer her, and I think when I answered her, I wasn't sure who it was first. Then I thought, 
wait a minute, is Emily Cummins? I know Emily Cummins. Is this Emily Cummins? I know, and it was. And it turns out she's an aspiring writer, and now she's actually more than aspiring. She's actually writing. And I'm holding in my hand one of her publications, Innovation Ocala. She works at the power plant. She's doing the content provider. Uh, for this, uh, trying to make Kevin Reed look good, which is a full-time job, by the way. Uh, she's subbing for Kevin today. And this nice look, attractive slick magazine, which goes out to, well, Emily, where does it go to? It goes to top business leaders around Ocala and Marion County um, and key innovators. So we're targeting entrepreneurs right here in Ocala so they can actually read what's going on at the power plant and in our community. Well, it's uh, it looks like it's taken off well and and uh, and it received well. There's some awful good articles in here, and so uh, I, how does one get this article? Um, we have different copies at the CEP right now. We're launching our fourth magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, the February issue will come out in about two weeks. So I'm out here at the station, as you can see yep. my name on it. And there's the address. So exactly. Very good. If anybody wants to know more information, what's a good email address they can email you about? You can email us at info at ocalapowerplant.com and we'll make sure you get all the right information and get on our mailing list. Okay, and as recently, um, Emily wrote a piece for me in our neighborhood magazines, which is the same genre, uh, and she wrote about why Ocala, why not Ocala, and she talked about wanting whether or not she could come back to Ocala or remain in Ocala uh, or not having to leave here to become a young professional someplace else and whether or not Ocala offered opportunities and as I recall the upshot of the article was yes why can't Ocala be that place where people like me can come correct? Mm-hmm. Absolutely and that's what I'm really passionate about at the power plant and it, the exciting thing is we're launching what's called Flip the Magnet next Friday night. So Flip it's, the magnet. Yep, flip the magnet. And the idea is that every community is like a magnet. We either attract or repel our brightest minds. And right now, a lot of students like myself see Ocala as a negative side. We just don't see the opportunities here. Um, but like I wrote in the article, there's tons of opportunities. You just have to look for them. And the Ocala Power Plant is trying to shine light on the opportunities that are here and create more. Um, So next Friday, 7 p.m. at Citizen Circle, we're having a launching party. Um, Cliff Craig, one of our interns at the power plant, has created a documentary. And essentially, he's interviewed students, teachers, different key influencers in our community on why students should come back here. And uh, we made a video. It's about five minutes long. We're going to have food from Mojo Grill, a live band. Um, It's going to be right downtown, Citizen Circle. It's going to be a fun night. So I hope our community comes out. Well, it's great to hear some young voices in the community. J.J., of course, uh, here has uh, been around here for a while. He's looking around about what he wants to do. He's got a couple of years to go in college. You're finishing up at the University of Florida in May. Yep. I'm sure that, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm sure J.J. would like to have opportunities to have options when he comes out of school to come back here and you say there are opportunities there are i mean ever since i started my internship at the ocala power plant in august i've come across i've I've stopped counting all the different companies that have asked me questions on marketing social media how you know young people that are graduating college can come back and help in our community um i after 10 i just i stopped counting other jobs to be had absolutely really absolutely well i think people would like to hear about those so can they get them in the innovation ocala or the website or how can they get them um you can find them at Mm ocalapowerplant.com we highlight different things on our blog the magazine is a huge resource we're highlighting stories of the different companies in the power plant as well as different innovators and entrepreneurs around ocala and opportunities that people can get involved in um but flip the magnet next friday night at 7 p.m is the launching point for this entire idea well i hope you'll keep us up to date absolutely don't i don't want to rely on kevin because he's worthless, just like me. Yeah. He won't, I was know. just about to say yeah. during yeah. the commercial break that Kev's nothing. No, she, no. Why doesn't she just come in here? Oh, he oh sits no. around. Imagine, imagine hey, JJ wants hey, to fire Kevin. He sits around oh, and wants to talk about the Gators oh, all the time. My she my got right God. into it. Listen, oh, look, this is our magazine. There we go. This is where we, we're doing on Friday. Come. Oh, remember, she remember, gets it out of the way. JJ, remember. He's your pastor, too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even mean it like that. Yeah. No, he didn't mean it that way. Well, as long as we're talking about that, the reason I, is that I'm the old guy here, and we talk about issues for everybody. We like to have young people's viewpoints, and Hunter says he's working on some kind of programming for us, for younger people and what they do, but I haven't seen it yet. We'll see. Uh, 
I, I'm looking for uh, uh, you know, some some good advice for young people from young people. Uh, we've had this ongoing discussion with this fraudulent Dr. Buddy segment that I do, uh, which is basically having a little fun but talking about relationships. And the reason I did it was someone very close to me, younger than me, asked me if I would do this, to have conversation because we need to have dialogue. Now, I don't want it to take, take over the program because it has at times taken over the program. But I want to get your viewpoint <laughs> as long as you're here and you're around the same age. When I say something about somebody, you know, uh, having a different viewpoint, JJ says, well, they've been married for what do you know? You know, he's always, and I say. That happened one time today. Well, actually, JJ is pretty respectful for the most part. Uh, one thing I like about him was he has appreciation in sports for things that happened in history the, before ESPN came along, which a lot of young people don't. Uh, and and I, I'm just saying that you definitely need to respect all age groups. And we, mm-hmm. we need to respect younger age groups and people my age as well. So what I'm asking is this. I just want your viewpoint. J.J., you can't allow to talk until I ask you a question. Is that we've had this ongoing discussion, and now another thing today, where uh, the article in the New York Times on, on Sunday uh, presented the theory that that courting, quote-unquote, something your dad knows about <laughs> and I know about, yep. which, of course, is... Asking out a young lady properly, you know, which uh, which I you know I'm a support and I'm sure Mark supports, uh, is something that's dying, uh, and it's more about texting and we just sit so and so we'll get a pizza and watch a rerun of a movie or whatever you know, uh, I mean and, and it's it's last minute stuff. Now I'm not, I'm not even going to ask you if you're in a, if you're dating or in a relationship whatever, but just give me your from your genre and your age group, give me your thoughts about that. All right. Um, I tend to take a more traditional view mm-hmm. on dating in general. Okay. So if a guy were to come to me, I would send him straight to my dad. I've grown mm-hmm. up with a Marine. Uh-huh. He's taught me well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Not a lot of people my age do it that way. Yeah. Um, they'll respond, like you said, to a text message, just yeah. go out, whatever they want to do. Um, but for me, the guy's got to go straight to the Marine in the house, get permission. There you go. And uh, then I would go out on a date with him. So I'm not an idiot. So there are some people out there who <laughs> yeah. do actually still do that. Uh, and as you can see, Emily's a very attractive young lady, smart. And, and, and I'm sure she has no problems finding guys if she wants them. But, uh, you know, I'm not saying which one's right, which one's wrong. I happen to have this view you have. And obviously others don't, J.J., uh, about of how things are done. Anyway, it's good to have your perspective. And, you know, I, I don't know. I know chivalry's dead to a lot of people. I know that they don't believe in doing things like, and I'm not saying you have to be the, the geek who always opens the door and pulls the chair out. I do that, but that's I'm an old guy. So, I don't know. Does that bother you when, when men don't do that? I think it makes the guy more attractive. Do you really? Me. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. You act like I don't see so you look over at me like I'm like such a horrible dude. No, but I mean, did you hear what I'm she not. said? Yeah, it makes I men know more that, track. man. I, okay, I'm just... Listen, I just talked to a girl that just got out of a relationship like a few weeks ago. And one of the things she said that really stuck out at me, she's just like, you know, I don't think he ever opened the door for me one time. Hmm. And I was like, wow. She there noticed. You know, Say she remembered. Yeah. And the thing about it is, deep down, J.J. is a traditional person. He would like to meet a young woman like his mom. I've that's never why, been. That's why I've to never been to someone's house to ask their dad. Yeah. For well, a date, I mean, but. that's just one view. But yeah. I mean, the point is, I'm just it, that doesn't happen. But you know what? Let me just say one thing, you JJ. When you find that right person and that one you're in love with, you'll do anything she yeah, tells you to do. So, uh, <laughs> yep. Anyway, thank you for that input. Good Absolutely. luck on the project, and uh, love the magazine and. And uh, tell uh, tell Kevin not to bother to come back. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Right? Well, thank you for Thanks having me. Thanks a lot. All right, Emily. Thank Emily you. Cummins from the Power Plant graduates from May, and she's already all over this town finding jobs for people and doing stuff. Good job, Emily. Thank you. All right, Emily Cummins. Take a break. Come back. We'll uh, do some tweets and quotes coming up at four o'clock. Councilman John McLeod at four thirty. Michael C. Mason written a book about riverboat landing stuff about uh, steamboats coming up to aqua river coming up next right here on the voice bill cal 1370 am 96.3 fm woca the source like a good neighbor state farm is there 
And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with their clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders. Each month on The Voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angela State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor's State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 294-2444. Bank approval. Vehicle purchase price effects trade allowance offers don't combine. I'm a car dealer who is feeling blue. I have too many cars and don't know what to do. If you're willing to put down a dollar or two, my misfortune can be a bonus for you. Hello, this is Chris Beers from Prestige Auto Sales, and I'm going loony. Last month, I took in too many trades, and now I've got cars in spades. Plus, additional cars are arriving daily. I have no idea where to put them, and I need your help. That means this week, 27 cars must go. So if you've got the desire to drive a nicer, newer car in two bucks, you're in luck. It's my New Year Blue Year Drive for Two here sale. Bad credit? Don't sweat it. Our For the People credit approval process can help you drive away today, even if it takes some extra rhyming and reasoning with the banks to get it done. Our lot is full, and that's noble. Two dollars down is all you'll pay to drive a nicer, newer car today. I'm Chris Beers from Prestige Auto Sales, and I'm a dealer for the people. See us in Ocala or Bellevue. Or call 694-1234. See you at Prestige. On the next day in Ocala Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Caitlin Friedman. She's a contributor to the Today Show, and she's coming on to speak to us about her book, Family Inc., Office-Inspired Solutions to Reduce the Chaos in Your Home. Open for debate, where both sides of one issue will be discussed. And then Hank Whittier will be in the studio bringing you veterans news, as he does each and every Thursday. And let's talk golf with James Beckett and Darren Irwin. And then Christopher Surf is coming on. He's an Emmy and Grammy Award-winning composer for Sesame Street, and he's written a book. It's called Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia Paranoica, the indispensable guide to everyone and everything you should be afraid of or worried about. Brian J. Dick is an associate professor of psychology at Colorado State University. He's written a book called Make Your Job a Calling, How the Psychology of Vocation Can Change Your Life at Work. All of that plus fun with Joe on the next day in Ocala Live right here on The Source, WOCA 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. Look who just walked in the room, Joe Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joe, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joe, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. As a business owner, nothing compares to the sense of pride you feel when unlocking your business first thing in the morning. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if the business down the street has the same insurance you do. What matters is that your independent insurance agent and the company that stands behind them have you covered. Auto Owners Insurance, the no problem people. Call George Mangan Insurance in Ocala today at 352-732-3191. To put on that party dress It was too cold to cry When I woke up alone I hit my last number I walked to the road Last dance with Mary Jane One more time to kill the thing Horse Beat Hamburgers, wow. <clears throat> it's a great that. song, JJ, by the way. Uh, what, Horse Beat Hamburgers? No, last, uh, last Dance with Mary Jane. Mary Jane's Last, last Dance. dance. Yeah. Uh, coming up, just about tweets and quotes. Uh, coming up in sports, lots to talk about with the hiring of two new NFL coaches. And coming up in just a minute here, are tweets and quotes for today. John McLeod, the uh, city councilman, joins us at 4. Michael Mason, the author of 4.30. Tweets and quotes. You know the story about the horse meat, right? Here's one from somebody named Nigel Williams. Do horse meat burgers give you the trots? <laughs> That's stupid. Gotta think about it. <laughs> Number two. 
What's right is left. What's left if you do everything else is wrong. Robin Williams. I have no idea what that means. I just thought it was Robin Williams' name next to it. What's right is left. What's left if you do everything else wrong. I don't know what it means. And here's a fairly serious one. I think it's very true by James Barry. Nothing has really worked. JJ, listen up. Nothing has really worked unless you'd rather be doing something else. Five o'clock around the water cooler. Talk about the NFL changes, switches, so on and so forth. Uh, and Tom, you enjoy this author because you're a historian, and you know, Michael Mason has uh, got a book out. <clears throat> He'll discuss his book, Okalaha River Steamboats, Turpentine Stills, and more, to it. Uh, on Sunday at, at Green Clover Hall on the McPherson Center. And uh, the boat's, boat's called Riverboat Landing. You know, I, I think it's a romantic period back when steamboats would come down the St. John's and down the Oklahoma River, which you look at now, you think of it as like a little tiny ditch for some people. Uh, to me, it was a mighty river when I grew up, uh, but the flows are so far down. Steamboats coming to the Oklahoma and coming into the head of Silver Springs and bringing large groups of people to Silver Springs from Jacksonville. The great Marjorie uh, Kenan Rollins author of The Yearling, Pulitzer Prize Yearling, Cross Creek, Golden Apples, great, still my all-time favorite author from Cross Creek. She, that's how she arrived here. She came here in the 30s. She came down the river. She came to uh, Silver Springs, and she wound up going to a place in the middle of nowhere called Cross Creek, and it was a total wilderness and hacking out uh, an existence as a writer and almost starved to death before she became famous. But uh, this should be interesting. This is the time <clears throat> uh, when the uh, riverboat steamboat captains uh, ran the jungle cruise at Silver Springs later on and what have you. And so this is going to be an interesting time. Looking forward to talking to Michael Mason. Right down your, right down your um, alley, Tom Schmitz. I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, John McLeod is in the green room, by the way. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to talking to him, too. The Silver Spring. He's there with Rick Allen. And they're, they're, they're going to talk Silver Springs. I'm really looking forward to that. Well, that should be interesting. Look forward to that. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I'm a little surprised. And probably the big shocking story today is is the, is the, is the story about Oregon's coach leaving in the middle of nowhere. I mean, just Jim Kelly just said he was at, staying, in, he was staying in Oregon. Now, I give a guy a right to change his mind. Something Jeffrey Lurie said to him changed his mind. Is that his name? What's the, who's the owner of the Eagles? Is it Jeffrey Lurie? Yes. Uh, Sounds right. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, th- they must have changed his big money game control. I was control just about to say, we already know what happened. He got a little Cash. more money than he was supposed I don't think, you know, he, look, he's bidding against Phil Knight from Nike. So, I mean, it's yeah. nice. So, I don't think money is that big a deal. I think control was even bigger. All right. So, apparently, he got control. Uh, and that's, I think, my you I don't know. Players coming in or? I, I, yeah. I mean, one of the things about coaches, they have to have some ability to say who they want on the field. Right. And I think maybe that might be the, I'm just guessing here. Because money, once you get to the five, six million dollar deal, you know, what, what's money? I don't money? know if he was, you know, is he really balling like that in Oregon? I yeah, mean, oh yeah, they were paying Chip Kelly almost four million. SEC a year. numbers? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. I just assumed with Oregon it wasn't quite up there. All right, we will take a break and we'll return. <clears throat> uh, coming up uh, on the uh next year, Rick Allen from the Star Banners here and uh, John McLeod joins us next right here on the program called The Voice Book Out. 1370 AM 96.3 FM streaming live at WOCA.com. The source. Hi, I'm Lisa Midget with Kinetic Motion Fitness, Ocala's premier small group and personal training fitness studio. Did you know you can achieve all your fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, getting fit, or training for a personal best, all with no membership fees? 
Have you ever been embarrassed or intimidated at a big gym because you're not a Greek god or a size zero supermodel? Have you ever felt like your gym would rather you not even show up? At KMF, we have a team approach that focuses on small classes and personal training, and you'll feel like family, not just another number. No more boring treadmills or endless reps. Our classes are fun, energetic, and get you the results you want. And I should know, with the help of our great trainers, I lost over 100 pounds in eight jean sizes, and I did it using no heavy equipment and no magic pills, just fun and effective workouts. And yes, I did say fun. Come join us at KMF. Visit our website at kmfocala.com or like us on Facebook. Again, that was kmfocala.com. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, CEO of Gateway Bank, inviting you to drop by our main office on Silver Springs Boulevard every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. for the Community Gazette, a three-hour show focusing on our favorite community to live and work, Ocala, Marion County. Come join us with the voice of Ocala, Buddy Martin, in the new old-fashioned bank radio studio as we discuss a variety of interesting topics on the Community Gazette on WOCA The Source. I'm Dawn Lovell, lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great way to get ideas ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals located on Southwest 10th Street just off Route 200 in Ocala and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. In Clark, we trust. Hi, this is Clark Howard. Join me every weeknight at 6, right here on WOCA 1370, The Source. We have Lena on the phone. Hi, this is Lena with ABC Frederick's Appliance. We service all makes and models and warranty our work and our used appliances. From Maytag to Whirlpool, Crosley and Speed Queen. So stop in at ABC Frederick's Appliance to see our showroom one-eighth of a mile from the tracks on County Road 25 in Bellevue. Or call 347-2781. That's 347-2781. That's one-eighth of a mile from the tracks on County Road 25 in Bellevue. ABC Frederick's Appliance. Great talking to you again, Lena. See you at ABC Frederick's Appliance. Why is everyone so obsessed with virtual reality and high definition? My neighbor came over yesterday to show me the photographs he took of the pansies and dianthus that I got from Kenny's Place Nursery. He had this electronic pad, and with the flip of his finger, he showed me these beautiful shots he took in my garden. Then he said, you can almost smell them. That's when I used my finger and motioned him to the garden, and then pointing with my cursor, also known as my finger, I pointed toward the real flowers from Kenny's Place Nursery, and I said, I can smell them. Instead of virtual reality, I enjoy real real reality. But it is more than the beauty of the pansies and dianthus and more than their fragrance. It's the way they move in the breeze. It's the butterflies and bees that are attracted to them. You know, the plants I get from Kenny's Place Nursery from my garden in the real world provide me with an outdoor sanctuary to escape from that virtual world. Kenny's Place Nursery is located at 7677 Southeast 41st Court in Ocala. Give them a call at 867-1213. Kenny's Place Nursery, where the plants, the people, and the mission are all beautiful. Howdy. I want to invite you to Dairy Queen for a great deal and a great meal. Right now, Dairy Queen is offering a hot, juicy quarter-pound cheeseburger meal, including the quarter-pounder with cheese, a fry, and a medium drink for only $4.99. And you can add a Sunday for only a buck. So if you love real grill cooked burgers cooked fresh to order, come get a great meal for only $4.99 at Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where they always treat you like kings and queens. Hello? Can you hear me? Because if you can, then so can your customers. Radio works. Call today to advertise your business right here on WOCA 1370, The Source. Keeping you in touch with Ocala. WOCA. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. 
ABC News Now, I'm Daria Albinger. President Obama says if his proposals to prevent gun violence save one life, they're worth it. He's announced 23 executive orders, including tougher penalties for people who lie on background checks. The president also wants Congress to renew and expand a ban on assault weapons and to limit high-capacity magazines. A lot of New York City parents leaving work early today. They have to pick their kids up from school. School bus drivers and matrons in that city are on strike. Your kids need a bedtime. And so do their devices. A study in the journal Pediatrics finds the more time children spend watching TV, playing video games, or using the computer right before bed, the longer it takes them to fall asleep. That could lead to health and learning problems over time. A popular TV dad has died. Actor Conrad Bain may be best known for playing the wealthy New Yorker Philip Drummond, who adopted his dying housekeeper's two young sons on different strokes. Bain was 89 years old. This is ABC News. And Go to Meeting is the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate online. Here's MindJet's Chief Marketing Officer, Yasha Kakis Wolf, telling us why he believes in GoToMeeting. For us, using GoToMeeting is our answer. It's the way that we move forward. It's what allows us to be successful. We're able to share the ideas, the plans with everybody um, inside of our company and out of our company. Visit GoToMeeting.com. Click the Try It Free button and enter promo code 45 for a free 45-day trial. Go to meeting. Meeting is believing. Our buyers negotiated the best deals of the season on the best floors, and they're all priced to move at Lumber Liquidator's January liquidation sale. Our best laminates and vinyl wood plank are 20% off our already incredibly low prices. Gunstock oak, pre-finished hardwood, one of America's most popular hardwoods, is just $2.69 a square foot. Plus, get special extended financing. These deals will not last. January liquidation sale is going on now. So visit LumberLiquidators.com today and find your local store. I'm just sick of all the amateur stuff, you know? I mean, like, if I'm paying top dollar, I want a little production value, you know? Like some editing, transition, something, some music. Don't worry, we didn't leave you. He's gone? He's not gone? That's the whole point? He's never gone! Our bosses say we gotta stay. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei! It's time for the second hour of The Voice of Ocala. Hoo-ha! You ever come across anything like time travel? Come on, stick around. It's free. If you win, you win. If you lose, you still win. Like the band said, hour two of the program called The Voice of Ocala. We have a studio full of people. That's a good thing. Joining us for this half hour, we got a doubleheader. We got Councilman John McLeod, and we've got Rick Allen, who covers uh, entertainment arts for the Star Banner. Welcome, gentlemen. Nice to talk to both of you. Thank Welcome, you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Uh, it's it's fortuitous that we have both of you here because one of the things I wanted to talk to to uh, Rick about was something that involves downtown and Ocala and development, which is is are the new restaurants that are be opening up. There seems to be a Spate, if that's a good word, of, of places opening. I read your column recently and and asked you to come on and talk about it. You had to cancel once because of a conflict. Yeah. But I mean, let's catch up, John. Can you you might remember we've got Feta Mediterranean, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We've got rumors of Blue Highway Pizza. Apparently, it oh, started. No yeah. rumor. Yeah. No I rumor I, there. I, well, I said I said rumors of uh, turned to be into be fact. Mm-hmm. They're building it right over here across the street from us right, right. now, as you speak. Uh, uh, I, I don't know any more about uh, Mojo's moving back to the old Carmichael's, although that's what I hear is happening. So what have I forgotten? I've forgotten one, I'm sure. Uh, well, you catch us up, Rick. That's your beat. Well, okay. Um, actually, there's one that I'm going to have to look into. I just saw the just saw the billboard for it today. Eh? Uh, the the uh, Tango um, uh, Argentinian Steakhouse apparently is going to go in where the old roadhouse roadhouse was there huh. by target mm. and uh they're they're on facebook right now saying that's where they're going to be and uh, apparently permits were just pulled uh uh last week to start interior renovation i don't know why they need to i mean mm. after after webster uh did such a yeah. great job there with latino samas while he was there temporarily mm-hmm. i mean they were they were ready to go it seemed like but uh that looks like it's a new one. I'm gonna ha- and I just found out about that today. So okay, that's and of course, w- of course, the old Phoenix is now is occupied by a familiar name, right? Ivy House. Mm-hmm. From uh, and I went there. I don't know, John. Have you been to Ivy House yet? Uh, not here in Ocala, but yeah, we like Wilson. Yeah, yeah like a lot Wilson, of us sit on the Wilson. But the, one of the things about it is uh, I went the first week, and I got to go back because it was just a horrible week. They were slammed. They they, they had wait an hour and a half wait. 
It's a good thing for a restaurant, but it's a difficult mm-hmm. thing. So I'm going to go back in time when everything's in, settling on that. Too. Well, one thing you'll notice about the the restaurants that are opening up here in in uh, Ocala and Marion County is that they're they're locally owned. Uh, the all the when I first moved here, it was all chains. chains. Well, when the the economy tanked uh, four years ago, who were the first ones to pull out of here? The chains. And who's been keeping it going ever since? Mm. Locally owned. Locally mm. owned. Uh, the mm. most, most of the ones that have opened up are locally owned, mom and pops, uh, maybe bigger than mom and pops. Mm-hmm. But it's the, it's the local people here at home, and that's the ones we, uh, you know, they've been keeping it going, and they're the ones we really yeah. ought to be uh, out there um, supporting, patronizing, encouraging. We want as many John as we can get here in Ocala. There are also some on the outskirts, like stump knockers and places right. like that, mm-hmm. uh, who still continue to do quite well. And, Absolutely. Uh, uh, where do you go, John, when you go out? Wow. Uh, well, I like, uh, I love Latinos and Moss, and Webster mm-hmm. does a mm-hmm. wonderful job there. Um, I have not been across the street since he's, uh, I believe he has ownership of, yeah, he's, of he has a, Yep, right. Um, anything he does, he does a great job. I love Mark's, I love Harry's, uh, I love my downtown restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Love my pizza places. What's the new one there that opened up right next to the Starbucks that's uh, the nightclub, Tom? Oh. Cantina. Cantina? I have Cantina. not been there yet. Yeah, but somebody told me that the lunch was quite yeah, good. Yeah, I, I've I, I heard that, that, yeah. The lunch is very good. I've right. heard that the lunch is good. I mean, and, you know, I I, I like the local places. Yeah. yeah. It's got a hometown feel to it. They do a great job. And Stella's Sushi Bistro, mm-hmm. Absolutely. et cetera. Sorry to see primary oven uh, shut down. But Tony Sushi. Uh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Right, Tony you know, Sushi. Tony's got a new place, uh, Bar and Grill. I right, guess. Next right. Tony's Bar and Grill over, yeah, over, over on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so, so the 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 restaurant scene is live and well. Right? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Especially downtown. Uh, mm-hmm. One thing I noticed uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and I've been kind of keeping tabs on, is uh, I counted up up close to twenty restaurants within a few blocks uh, on either on Broadway or within a block or two from Broadway, and that that's just incredible downtown. Uh, and that brings something to mind too. And during our strategic retreat the other day. You know, it was brought up, you know, how it can be a difficult process to open a restaurant or or a new business. And we're going to try to make an attempt as a city to streamline that process and try to make it a little bit more easier for someone to come in and open up and get started. So I heard a lot of people complaining about that over over at the Ivy House. But also there was some issues with them not getting their plans in. Their right, right. So, right. Well, there's there's two sides to that story, right. but we want to make sure that... It's easy. It's it, one, it, yeah, yeah it, it, when you come in, we want to... We're, we want to help don't you. make it difficult for we want to help. walk you yeah. through the process yeah. and help you and that's kind of our goal one of our goals mm-hmm. to make ocala more business friendly and part of being the economic hub is being more business friendly yeah, any rumors or new other places you heard about anybody well, might not open up not a rumor but yeah. uh the uh, uh chipotle yeah uh, i saw your story that's coming, when i called is, you about is that. coming down also i'm familiar with that from being yeah. from denver that, yeah and, that, uh, i used to go there quite a bit and, yeah that's one that's going into that uh that new building there at uh uh, College Road and twenty and Southwest Twenty Seventh. Yeah, I was trying to picture in my mind where that was mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, right across the street from uh, the soon to be gone Books a Million. Right, right. Yeah, right, how about right. that? K- Kmart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. Right Which Books a Million, as I, as I see how it's going, wants to reopen in Ocala. It's at least issue they say. Right. Yeah. yeah so hopefully least. they'll still. I like Books a Million. Yeah, I hope well, they'll stay. Yeah, my colleague Dave Schlenker is doing a kind of a Facebook poll right now on uh, asking people where should Books a Million go. Yeah. And. Well, that's what Jamie Pope wants. Did you know, you know is, that the woman from Ocala that ran books of me? I, I think she's maybe I guess she's retired now. What I did my book on Florida football in the nineties. She ran the entire state. She's from Ocala, uh-huh. and uh, she's very much involved. So anyway, yeah, those are good things to know. So uh, entertainment wise, anything else in terms of Rick? In terms of uh, stuff well, happening that well, we should know about? Well, we're coming into a. a a moderately slow period. Generally, the the fall is our is a really big, mm-hmm. heavy, heavy period entertainment wise. But uh, they've got some good acts coming in out at uh, uh, Circle Square. Uh, of course, next weekend is the uh, the the, the uh, Greek festival. Mm-hmm. That's always a uh, uh, for me. That's always a tasty time. Yeah, uh, I, I just love the, I can't I can't pronounce I can't pronounce most of the dishes, yeah. but I certainly do enjoy eating them. Yeah. Um, 
the circle. See, how about the Cedar, Cedar, Cedar Key Seafood Festival? That's been going for years and right, years. Yeah. And you can't even get there with so many people. I mean, is it still that popular? I mean, it used to be oh, it's, it's backed it's, up for it's, miles. Yeah, it's wildly popular. Uh, wildly, wildly popular. Same thing with the uh, Blue Crab Festival up in Palatka. Mm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes. yeah. Somebody <laughs> told me crab. <laughs> yesterday there was a Jimmy Buffett like restaurant in the forest that was very good. I well, don't know about it. There's a place out there, uh, and I keep keep wanting to get out there. But it's it's just like everything else, getting across, you know, mm -hmm. going over the river and through the woods. Uh, but it's uh, it, it, they ha they built their own jail. It, it's a mock jail, hmm. but it, and, it, and it's supposed to be for a fun time for people. It's it's right there, right around um, Mill Dam Lake and so forth. Hmm. I understand it's it's a great t a great time Half out there. Lake, all area yeah, yeah, land, yeah, yeah, yeah. Land probably, huh? Yeah, yeah. I ha I hmm. haven't been there. I want to go, and uh, you plan to get out there one of these days because hmm. uh, I'm just excited by the just the just the thought of it. It's just uh, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you guys about the villages. <clears throat> okay. How much do you think our local restaurants depend on traffic from the villages? Well, you know, I, I think it helps a great deal, especially um, I would say the restaurants downtown get a get a good bit of business from the villages. Um, some of the ones on Pine Street, uh, I, I would say they benefit more than some of the other ones. The, the Highway 200 restaurants, most of those uh, probably don't get as much. But I, I do think it's a big part of our local economy having those folks come up and eat in our restaurants and spend time in our downtown. And, you know, we'd like to see more of them. Uh, I know that downtown, a couple of places we did that, uh, you know, we did low remotes for a while. There were lots of people from the mm -hmm, villages down mm -hmm. there. We, Tom and I used to talk to them quite a bit. They came up uh, at four, eight at a time and uh, mm -hmm. had those mm -hmm. coupons in their hand, man, ready to go. Absolutely. You know, taking advantage of it. Well, they have, a, they have a, this interesting, a dining club down there. It's kind of uh, self-reviews where they just go out and they... Uh, uh, they 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 go as a group or individuals, right. and then right. they come back and they write about it and so forth. And it's just fascinating. They have a an incredibly huge database of yeah. restaurants that they've gone to, including Ocala, yeah. uh, Ocala all all over Marion County. And I don't want to just emphasize just Ocala, yeah. but uh, with all, all due respect. But uh, well, I live know, in Marion County also. Okay, <laughs> the, but yeah, we have a lot of we have a lot of great restaurants throughout the county. I mean, last look, I uh, last time I checked the uh, the state uh, licenses more than uh, five hundred individual yeah. restaurants mm -hmm. in Marion County. Well, I mean, County. there's Pasta Ferry down in Bellevue. There's yeah. other places. I don't. Absolutely. I'll talk about. I can't Mojo's think. Mojos in Bellevue. Yeah, Mojo's yeah there in is Bellevue Mojos in Bellevue. Bellevue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, some some other good places. Uh, we've got about. Three or four minutes here. Uh, what do you think our future is in terms of the entertainment business and restaurant business? Or do you think this is this is a like the Gaslight District? If this <laughs> actually happens, how big a boost would that be to the downtown to have a group of restaurants together in North uh, wow. up in North Ocala? Uh, tremendous, uh, and I think is that doable? Yes. Um, time frame of how we're you know it's all going to come together that may take some time you know with the the money issues that we have but uh we're already on our way with the restaurants and entertainment uh citizen circle right behind city hall there's going to be a fall concert series Which, that's beautiful maybe even late summer yeah. uh concert series i believe it may start even in august and janie pope's going to be uh taking care of that and and lining up some really good entertainment and We've had great success. It, it succeeded all our expectations when we've had events down there, and of course, FAFA will be coming back mm -hmm. downtown in the fall. And we we're mm -hmm. very excited about that. Yeah, and don't forget now that the Marion Theater is going to change its venue some when the movie season starts getting slower. They're going to do events down there, and it may just mm -hmm. be things like a half an hour of live music. You know, at seven mm -hmm. o'clock before a movie or something, mm -hmm. and they're planning to use the theater for different things. So, mm -hmm. and I imagine it will be available to book for certain events and things. Yeah, like that. I think Caesar, that's what Caesar, Caesar wants to Caesar do. Caesar definitely wants, wants to do that. Yeah, yeah. and and you know, having him come in is just a, is a great. He really yeah, is. He's, yeah. a, he's a he's a local yeah. guy. He's got his heart in the business. Uh, he and Carmen both are lovely people. And, Absolutely. Uh, and I I, want, I would support them even mm -hmm. if I wasn't a member of, say, the Marion Theater uh, <laughs> because I think it's, it's, they're such nice people. So. Uh, yeah. And I can't wait to see what, what all goes in, in north north of right. uh, Silver Springs. Right. That's, uh, you know, I can't. There's a, there, there's well, no other area that really needs the. And it's just not north of Silver Springs Boulevard. Well, it's, it's the, the whole area. That whole and, area there, yeah. You know, we want to not just do one thing. We want to 
attempt to do it all and Good. within the you know uh, again we have to bear in mind where we are with mm-hmm. the economy and everything but as it, it continues to improve things will continue to improve downtown I promised Rick Allen I'd get him out of here. He has an assignment to go to. Rick Allen, Starbucks. You can read him at Ocala.com. Mm-hmm. Hope you'll come back. And I'd talk love some, to come back, and buddy. Let's, let's, let's talk more about what's happening because you're the man. You're the happening dude around well, here. Well, thank you. Thank All you. Right? I try to be. That's you what, do. That's what they pay me for. You do for. a terrific job. <laughs> so. and thank you, Rick. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Thank and, you. And John will stick around. John McLeod, City Council. We're going to talk about, guess what? Silver Spring, something near and dear to his heart. Right here on the program called The Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. Hi, this is Brad from Ocala Aviation. How would you like to have someone give you $4,000? Call me. Brad, can't end the commercial that way. Why not? Because you have to tell them why you're giving away $4,000. No, I don't. It's $4,000. Yeah, I know, but for what? Oh, I see. You mean, like, uh, tell them it's for a flight scholarship that gives young people a chance to fulfill their dreams of becoming a pilot? Yeah, something like that. Nah, just give them the phone number. It's $4,000. All right. What's the phone number? 352-861-7484. Okay, that works. What you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Casual activities like taking a walk or listening to your favorite music increases the activity in the areas of the brain associated with concentration and decreases the levels of the stress hormones that limit memory. When people suddenly realize they have very different expectations, it can lead straight to that post-holiday breakup. The longer we sit, the greater our odds of developing deadly diseases ranging from diabetes to heart disease. On the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. They've served our country. They've kept us free. And they need your help. We're sitting in Veterans Park. You can't sit here not realizing that you're surrounded by heroes. There are a lot of heroes in our community. A lot of heroes, unfortunately, are not in good financial shape. They're hurting both physically and financially. We step in and help directly. Our role is to reach out to them. We're there to help the veterans. We do counseling. We do outreach. Sometimes it's just coming into the office and sitting down and saying, hey, I've got a problem, and you're talking to another veteran who understands that problem. Everybody who works for the Vets Helping Vets are awesome, and they are 
are so kind to everybody. They're like my second family. They really are. They have been there during the holidays. I have gotten unexpected visits, assistance. Vets Helping Vets of Marion County needs your help. Call today, 352-433-2320 and pledge your support to Vets Helping Vets of Marion County. It really has been a blessing. Welcome back to the program. John McLeod hung around with us for the next 10 minutes. We had to cover a few things. Thanks to Rick Allen, the Star Banner. And thanks, John, for sharing the microphones there. And uh, catch us up on some things. We keep hearing, you know, what's going on in the city, the negotiations with baseball teams and businesses. And I know it's tough for you to let anything out of the bag, but can you give us an overall picture? Are we moving forward on these things or not? Uh, yes, we are moving forward. I mean, uh, as for baseball, I mean, it's obviously there's no huge secret out there that, you know, we've been looking into the Yankees and vice versa, and we're excited about it. But uh, we're, you know, still early on in the stages to see if it's a good fit for the Yankees and good fit for us. Well, this is that period where we're all kind of waiting. The election is over, as we all know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Obamacare issue has hit a lot of people. There's a lot of talk about that one way or the other. Uh, employees are finding your paychecks, you know, obviously they are a little lighter. Uh, but the economy appears to be chugging along. You know, I mean, I'm not an economist here, but I mean, let's put it this way. Uh, we avoided the first fiscal cliff, and we've avoided the second one. Maybe there's hope of having a good year. What, well, what a difference it would be to be talking about our economy and our new partnership program with Kevin Sheely. Uh, and with the chamber and, and recruiting businesses if we had a good economy to work in? Well, it's getting better. And yeah. and just as you said, and you know, we've had two companies come here in the past year, a Cytel and Ansiphone. Um, How are they doing? Uh, well, they're, they were on the ground, both companies were on the ground hiring people in less than six months. And Ansiphone, uh, when they had their ribbon cutting, we were told then that he was even looking to expand and probably bring his corporate people down here also. Uh, I actually use their service. It's an answering service. How was it? Fantastic. They do a wonderful job. Uh, phone call comes into my office. I'm not there. Immediately I get a text, or if it's emergency, they'll even call my phone hmm. directly. So hmm. um, real time for Is getting back to my clients. No, it's really not. Um, it's It's very affordable, and they do a wonderful job, and we're just happy to have them here, and you know Kevin Chile's now our CP leader, and and we're excited about the opportunity. At least I am, um, and I have to be careful so I don't speak for all the council members. But I'm we're ex- just talking about John McLeod today. But, the rest but, of those people can defend for themselves. Well, and John McLeod's excited about uh, bringing businesses to our economy, and um, you know some people look at that and go, "Wow, why would you do that?" Uh, we need to diversify our economy. We need to bring businesses here. In this world, we're competing with every other city in the United States. Um, we have a lot of things that other places don't have. We're centrally located. Our weather's good. Um, the cost of living is low. We have the ability to do things here that other people don't. We have an enterprise zone, and we can offer some incentives there. And uh, different incentives we offer through the city, and we want them here. We want people here. We want to diversify and grow our economy. Yeah, I think the sign needs to go up. Ocala's in is uh, in business to get business, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the. And I, th- I like what Kevin Sheely said on this program. He came on the first week he was here, and he had an interesting perspective. I said this several times, being from Kentucky, mm-hmm. and I asked him, "How are you going to be able to sell Ocala?" You know, it's not a large metropolitan area. Well, see, first of all, it's, you know, it's close to a lot of metropolitan areas. So secondly, he says, if you think selling Ocala in Florida is difficult, try selling Kentucky. He said, I've been to meetings and boardrooms where people had no idea where Kentucky was on the map. <laughs> he said, everybody knows where Florida is. And then he proceeded to say, here's the thing about Ocala. He said, not only is it in the middle of three major airports, but it's halfway between Atlanta and Miami, 
which is a corridor of, what do you say, 20 million people or something like that? If you want to get lo located in the middle of two dynamic markets, halfway between the two, and you we want to be have a geography again playing into it, as it always has for Ocala. Uh, and I think that's a terrific idea, a way to pitch it. Well, and, you know, also speaking of being what we're between, opening the Panama Canal, Port of Tampa, Port of Miami, mm -hmm. those places expanding, uh, we're right up the pipeline uh, as a central place. That's why we want to become an inland port where those goods come here and then we ship them off from there. And right. that's one of our goals. I think what people want to see now is bricks and mortar. We've talked about a lot of things on California 89, and we've all talked about them. City Council, County Commission, we all have these pipe dreams, whatever. What they want to see is tangible evidence that we're moving forward, and I know you do too. Mm -hmm. But one thing that's, that is right there, that's already there, we can talk about, is right down the road of Silver Springs. And we are moving closer to some kind of agreement here with the state. We don't know what that is yet, and we don't know exactly how it's going to break down, but it appears as though it appears as though the state's going to take it over to, to run as a park. We're hoping there's a component there for local businesses to be involved as well, which I'm sure we'll find out. But unless it gets cleaned up and the state gets a state park piece, we won't have that. But I asked a friend of yours, Charlie Dean, the senator from the 3rd District who lives over in Citrus County, Earlier this week, I had a conversation with Charlie and asked him about, you know, what's it going to take from the governor and everybody else to get behind this program to get Silver Springs rolling. Here's what he said. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I, I laugh. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I, I laugh at, you know, telling the, you know, uh, the commission, uh, executive director, uh, Hershey Vineyard, I said, you know something? Of all the good things that the governor could ever do is come down, pull his boots off, roll up his breeches leg, take off his socks, and wade out his silver sprays. That would do him more good than anything. It would cleanse his soul, too, Charlie. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I tell you, I believe that so much. And uh, I, I just, I really want to see uh, the, the springs ha have a second shot at, at being the jewel of tourism in Florida. Do you believe this will happen, Senator Dean? Oh, yes, yes, I do. You know, Rome wasn't built in, in a day, and it didn't burn it down a day. We just got to keep working and working hard and take advantage of each proper step in a methodical way, and I think we can get it done. And having DEP involved right now, holding these hearings, and having their legal staff uh, now pursuing the lease agreements and, and, and all the contingents that go with that, the tremendous, tremendous savings to Marion County and City of Ocala and all of us. Uh, it, it, it is the right thing to do with the right people at the, at the wheel at this time. And Charlie went on to say he commended the County City Commission and City Council everybody for supporting. Your thoughts about those comments? Well, first of all, Charlie Dean has been such a huge asset to the people of Ocala and Marion County. Uh, he's always been there for us. We need something, he is there. He carries so much weight in Tallahassee. Um, he's a big fellow to begin with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and being a former sheriff and everything, you know, when he, he speaks, people listen. And um, But, you know, he's got a huge district. And for him uh, to always look at look at Ocala and Marion County and, and go, hey, I want to help them and, and, and help this whole area, it's, he's a huge asset for us, and we should all appreciate what he's done for us. Big plus. Absolutely. I found out he was a, I didn't know this, a graduate of CFCC. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think he said he was born in Marion County, too. But anyway, so it's good to have as many as we can on the program. I, here's just my final thoughts in the last 60 seconds. I'll get yours. I think we all need to be more aggressive in going after Silver Springs. Well, yeah, and step one is get it out of the control of Palace Entertainment and into control of, of the state. Uh, step two, I really firmly believe that there should be a local component and um, some local leadership involved with Silver Springs, uh, with the county being the oversight there, uh, and then some local control where, where again, local businesses in Silver Springs worked for the better part of 80 years. 
And okay. your great grandfather, Shorty Davidson, was part of that. Oh, for for a good thirty or Davison forty years, Ray, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that's 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 the time the springs were the cleanest. That's the time the spring. It was the heyday of the most springs. compatible. The economy, economy was best, and then, uh, everything was great during those days. Yeah, the local people had their own stores inside of Silver mm-hmm. Springs. They just rented space from them, yeah. and they took care of it, and they took pride in Silver Springs and kept the place very clean. And that you, model will work today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, that model never broke. Yeah. The model that that came right. in after it exactly. did break. Good point. Hey, John, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks for spending time with us today. We'll catch up to you down the road when we uh, have a chance to talk about more things in the city. Meanwhile, hit the ball straight. I'll, I'll do the best I can. I'm not the guy that plays five days a week. I know, like there's the another paper, guy. There's the another guy. Paper. I might play two times a well, week, that's okay. but not five. You're lying. I mean, after all, you get the handsomely paid job down of being city councilman. Two hundred dollars a month, Every and month, I and I don't go. hit it straight. <laughs> John, thanks a lot. Thank Appreciate you. it, buddy. John McLeod, city councilman. We'll take a break. We're going to talk about something else. John McLeod, I would love. It's about the days of riverboats on the Okawaha River. Author Michael Mason is here to talk about his book Riverboat Landing. We'll have hear what he has to say about the good old days of the Silver River, Aqua River, all that coming up next right here on the Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Hi, I'm Lisa Midget with Kinetic Motion Fitness, Ocala's premier small group and personal training fitness studio. Did you know you can achieve all your fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, getting fit, or training for a personal best, all with no membership fees? Have you ever been embarrassed or intimidated at a big gym because you're not a Greek god or a size zero supermodel? Have you ever felt like your gym would rather you not even show up? At KMF, we have a team approach that focuses on small classes and personal training, and you'll feel like family, not just another number. No more boring treadmills or endless reps. Our classes are fun, energetic, and get you the results you want. And I should know, with the help of our great trainers, I lost over 100 pounds in eight jean sizes, and I did it using no heavy equipment and no magic pills, just fun and effective workouts. And yes, I did say fun. Come join us at KMF. Visit our website at kmfocala.com or like us on Facebook. Again, that was kmfocala.com. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with their clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders. Each month on The Voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angela State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor's State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 294-2444. On the next day in Ocala Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Caitlin Friedman. She's a contributor to the Today Show, and she's coming on to speak to us about her book, Family Inc., office-inspired solutions to reduce the chaos in your home. Open for debate, where both sides of one issue will be discussed. And then Hank Whittier will be in the studio bringing you veterans news, as he does each and every Thursday. And let's talk golf with James Beckett and Darren Irwin. And then Christopher Surf is coming on. He's an Emmy and Grammy Award-winning composer for Sesame Street, and he's written a book. It's called Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia Paranoica, the indispensable guide to everyone and everything you should be afraid of or worried about. Brian J. Dick is an associate professor of psychology at Colorado State University. He's written a book called Make Your Job a Calling, How the Psychology of Vocation Can Change Your Life at Work. All of that plus fun with Joe on the next day in Ocala Live right here on The Source, WOCA 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. Accident, injured, hurting, pain affects so many of us and keeps us from enjoying our daily routine. This is Dr. Riyad Fakuri, board certified chiropractic orthopedist at the Fakuri Medical and Chiropractic Center. Let me visit with you to answer your questions. Let us help you help yourself on the Head to Toe Care Show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. on WOCA. Again, that's Dr. Riyad Fakuri here to help you on the Head to Toe Care Show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. on WOCA, The Source. 
ripped from the headlines of an imaginary tabloid. Six women with brain death or expiring minds want to know. It takes you on a musical journey into the wacky world of pop culture where you'll find wannabe prom queens, desperate housewives, aliens, and the secret lives of Barbie and Ken. Six Women with Brain Death is a zany musical and live on stage at Ocala Civic Theater January 4th through January 20th. Call 352-236-2274 or buy online at ocalacivictheater.com. Be there. News Talk 1370. WOCA invites you to discover your full business potential. News Talk Radio is the perfect environment for your advertising. WOCA's News Talk format pinpoints information hungry, better educated, high income adults. So use us to talk to them. Call 732 8000. 732 8000. We're Ocala News Talk Radio. News Talk 1370. WOCA. Welcome back to the program, Voice for Cal. Pleasure now to introduce to the program Michael C. Mason, who will discuss his book, Okawaha River Steamboats, Turpentine Stills, and more, 2 o'clock Sunday at the Green Clover Hall, which is the McPherson Center, I believe. It's at 322 Southeast 28th Street. Refreshments will be served. And the signing of his book, which I have in my hands, which is a beautiful looking book I'm anxious to talk about, called River Boat Landing. Uh, Michael's a local historian, author, the senator. He's telling me, I think, five generations here, and he knows the river quite well, and it's a pleasure to welcome Michael to the program. Hello, Michael. How are you? I'm great, and thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm looking at your book here. First of all, uh, uh, this is uh, this is quite an undertaking. There's a lot of pictures and a lot of writing in this book. As a, as a fellow author, I know how much work goes into this stuff. But what I like about it, as I fan through it, is you have a lot of documentation and wonderful drawings and pictures and things, that, many of which I've never seen before. I mean, uh, uh, and so you were telling me some stories about, uh, I believe you said it was one of your relatives that delivered the mail on the river? Well, he was a, he was a postmaster, uh, and that's a little bit different than today's postmaster. What he did is he lived in the... The uh, the swamp and in that that section uh, around uh, uh, oh actually pretty pretty close to Connor Landing. Okay. And uh, what they would do is the riverboats would come through and deliver the mail, but they didn't have mailboxes back then. What they had were cypress trees that were hollered out, and they would leave the mail in the tree. He'd collect the tree, deliver the mail to whoever it went to, and place the mail that they had going out into the tree for the boats to pick up. Well, and, uh, and looking at these, these, for those who don't know, that in the old days, we didn't have any other transportation. We didn't have railroads. We didn't have uh, airplanes, and we had boat wet ships. And people came, got here, this part of Florida, by coming down the St. John's and then coming through the down to the Okawa Silver River and up to the head of the springs, if that's where you were going, or just along the Okawaha there. So, and I'm looking at these, and I know that my favorite author, Marjorie Kennan Rollins, and you're familiar with as well, she came down that way when she came to Cross Creek. Uh, yes, she to, did. Um, and I'm looking at these, uh, these wonderful shots of the steamboats and the names of them. We have uh, been collecting for over 20 years. I wow. have a very large collection. My family and my mother actually started it and i picked it up and wow. we went on from there and this book was 18 years in the making wow. and has a lot a lot of history and uh uh I, this is the first book that's ever been published with full color pictures of the steamboats uh-huh. in it we should tell people how much it costs and where you can buy it and remind them you can go get it on sunday uh, if information or is there an email address of any kind or address? Or yes, we, you can get it at the uh, the History Museum. The museum, that's good. Uh, you can get it at Rick Dunn's Hair Hut, which is okay. over on Twenty uh, Fourth. Okay. You can get it at the uh, Marion County Cultural Center. Okay. Uh, it's uh, available a lot of places, and good. it's forty dollars. Okay. It's two hundred and sixteen pages. It's a big book. It's it's a, we tried to make something that was really nice, is what I what I really attempted to do. And over the the reason it took me so long to to really get it published right is because I wanted to do it right. Well, you did, and, and so many pictures I've never seen. And I know I've seen quite a few pictures of Silver Springs and, and seen on the river. There's and, over and, 400 photographs in that picture. Wow! In that book. And and I see names, 
Some of these names of these steamboats later were named, uh, the glass bottom boats were named after them. That's correct. And, uh, and looking at downtown shots of the courthouse. Uh, I know Tom Schmitz, our historian, he's a history major. We'd love to get his days on uh, 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 on this, uh, hands on this picture. I'm looking, it says early, early high school in downtown Ocala. That was yeah. my high school, oh, yeah. Ocala. Yeah. That was yeah. Ocala way, High School. I've already had my hands on that book. Oh, I've you have? Out, I've been out there a lot Oh, okay. You're already looking at it. Yeah, I figured you'd be there. But wonderful historical pictures. All right, well, tell me the two or three things, before we get too far down the road, and, uh, that, that people will learn from this. I haven't had a chance to read it. But well, what we did with the book, buddy, was we tried to show the different industries that were impacted by the riverboats. Well, citrus industry is right the, here. I'm the at. citrus industry, the turpentine industry, not only just the tourism industry, but you had logging and rafting. People don't realize how many logs were rafted up to the St. John's. And we, we show a lot of early Silver Springs up to some current stuff, and we show early Ocala and then up to, to uh, the 50s and the 60s. So we tried to show the whole gamut of what the boats did for this area. Because if it was not for the river boats, Ocala would not be what it is today. Yeah, it just there, absolutely yeah, would not no be. No question. That was that what really what I mean, ultimately, that's what got us. I mean, we, Hernando de Soto came through here, but there wasn't really a pathway to get beat to come to Ocala any other way at that point in time, that's except right. the river. That was it. Well, people looked at coming to Silver Springs and coming on that boat journey like we would look like going to the, the Amazon, Amazon today. Because exactly. exactly. it was known as, as the great mystery place. It's wild. And many, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of game and a lot of uh, animals. Uh, Tell people, you know, I, I grew up with this. I, I can see the, I can see the V's on the tree. I know what. Tell them what a turpentine still is for those who don't well, know. Well, turpentine still is where the, uh, and I've got somebody aficionado right here in the room that knows a lot about the turpentine still, but they were cut. Uh, pine trees were cut with V cuts, and then the sap or resin collected, and then it was taken and it was boiled down and it was processed, and then it was a lot of times, and people don't realize, all of the boats that traveled during the Civil War and in and out of this area and all over the United States were covered with turpentine on the bottom to keep them from sinking. Ah, like pitch. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. So people don't realize, and 90% and of all of that turpentine resin came from out of Marion County. Hmm. Well. Wow. Uh, you know, this is some odd-looking ones. This is like this right here. This is the Oklahumpke, which looks like it might be literally a houseboat. Well, the people do not realize the, the size of the boats. How'd they get the that on the river? Because the river well, was wider then. you couldn't uh, get it on the river today. There's yeah, no but way. You they could then, they have let the river deteriorate right, right. so much. These boats, the bigger ones, were 18 foot wide, 85 foot in length, and had a four-foot draft. Well, a lot of people say, you know, how did that boat like that get up and down the mm -hmm. river? Well, they were inboard steam paddles, and they were unique only to the Oklawaha River. Really? They were produced nowhere else in the world, and the paddle was encased inside the boat so that it would not get caught up in overhang. Mm -hmm. Good and thinking. Stuff. And yeah. they would have to have a person on the front of the boat with a long pole pushing so that when the they way. pushing stuff out of the way but when they got to a hairpin curve they had to push it around mm. by pushing the, with the pole on you. the front of the boat there was no rudder <laughs> that's <No>. exactly <laughs> that's it you know you got a, a very famous guy in his own right here who had a very strong thumbprint on silver springs himself Bruce Mozart on the telephone with us right now. Oh, that's great. Bruce is a very, very close friend. He's a member of the Silver Springs Lions Club, and Bruce and I are very good friends and have been for many, many years. Hi, Bruce. Yeah, uh, what I was going to tell you, I have a film called The Birth of a City. I don't know if you ever saw it, but it shows the beginning of Ocala and Silver Springs and the growth of Silver Springs and how the railroad come there back backwards back in there after the river boats and uh, it shows the old hotels and all those things in it and then shows the city of Ocala that people don't realize was a squatter's town and then it shows the turpentines and the different industries and the whole film I made it years ago with the chief of police Alvarez and he got all the material three day, three years and then also 
people don't realize that Silver Springs one time hired a man they use on the researchers on the Ottawa River, the old boats uh, from all that section, and they hired him and did the whole history. And there's a book on it. Hmm. And Amazing. I'm surpri- I'm surprised that uh, you know, didn't realize that. That's, uh, that that I've got pictures you won't believe of the old boats and the old things and up the rivers and coming up the rivers and and uh, big old. I got a lot of them. Well, have you seen Michael's book yet? No. He's got a wonderful. He's got some wonderful pictures of steamboats on uh, lots of them. So you should yeah. be sure and get that, and uh, and you should should be sure and check that out, Bruce. And uh, yeah, I'll let that's you. What these are. I'll let these you two. Yeah. Oh, well, you should. Boats. You two should compare notes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, I just thought I'd mention. I appreciate it, Bruce. It, it's always a pleasure, Bruce, and to have you. Talk to you. Thank God you. Bless you. Have a good day. Thank you, Bruce. Very special guy there in Bruce Bozart. Living sure. legend in this area. Yeah. Yes, All right, we're is. going to take a break real quick, f- come back and finish up with Michael. I want him to tell us again about fascinating pictures in here, I must say. Really interesting. 18 years to write this book, which is called Riverboat Landing. It'll be available to you. Uh, it's available now at the local museum. We'll talk about that a little bit later on and finish up with Michael right here on the program called The Voice of Gallo. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The source. Hello, I'm Dawn Lovell, lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great way to get ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals, located on Southwest 10th Street, just off Route 200 in Ocala, and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information, call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Don't get caught in the dark. Call Tri-County Generators, LLC, first at 1-800-622-1957, your authorized Generac dealer. Tri-County Generators are there when you need them with new generators for home standby, commercial, RV, and portable generators. They also service your existing systems. Now is the time to act. Be prepared before you have an emergency. Call Mike Gant today at 1-800-622-1957. That's 1-800-622-1957 for Tri-County Generators. So what did you do with your weekend? Me? I was flying, because I'm taking flying lessons from Ocala Aviation. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, I'd like to give that a shot, but I'm not quite sure. Well, I've got the solution. It's called the Discovery Flight, and that's exactly what it is. It helps you discover the wonder of flying, and if it's for you. It's only $99, and it gives you the chance to learn a bit more about the airplane, and then actually go for a ride with a flight instructor and take control of the airplane. That's how I got started, and now I'm on my way to being a pilot. I know, scary thought, right? But the demand for qualified pilots is stronger than ever. And with the help of Ocala Aviation, you could make a career change and learn to be a commercial pilot. But it all starts with a discovery flight. So stop by the flight school, conveniently located at the Ocala Airport, visit the website at ocalaaviation.com, or call 861-7484. That's 861-7484. Ocala Aviation. Your adventure starts here. 
Hey, Matt. I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. up here with uh, author Michael Mason working on this book for 18 years Riverboat Landings beautiful 215 page book history of the Aqua River Steamboats uh, full color photographs on the cover and the back and I think you'll find it really interesting I encourage you to check out uh, the the, the, the uh, book signing on Sunday which is at 2 o'clock uh, the Green Clover Hall that's the McPherson Center um, and uh, right next to the museum right Yes, yes, that's uh, true. Uh, and it's at 322 Southeast 28th, so refreshments will be served. All right, what else you get? Other things you'll be talking, and you also got something to show, right? Yes, we're going we're gonna to talk about things in the book. We're going to show a model of one of the river boats. And my father, for years, my father is Franklin Mason, and he has built replicas. And uh, it's he always told me, they don't look pretty, but the real river boats didn't look real pretty mm. either. So mm. we're going to have one of those replicas there. Mm. We're going to have a bunch of really nice large prints there for people to look at. Mm. We're going to talk about the history of the river. A lot of people don't know the meaning of the word Oklawaha, mm. and it means dark, crooked water. Mm-hmm. That's the Indian or the Native American yeah name of the of the Oklahoma. And it was dark, but yet it was clear. That's the funny part about it. Right. Well, Silver River was right. clear, but when it hit the Oklahoma, it got turned black. It, yeah. Because of the tannic acid, yeah. it looked black. Yeah. And uh, in the book, we have the full uh, history of all the landings going all the mm-hmm. way out to Eureka and mm-hmm. all, all the way out. Mm-hmm. And we have a history on every boat that was registered. I just, re- I just saw that. You and them all it shows listed here. their length, their size, the tonnage, who owned them. Wow. And that was a lot of research to go back and sure is. And very extensive. On it's very extensive. You know, the thing about it is, is that I've had this picture in my mind for quite some time. As you know, they're trying now. We're trying. We're all trying to see if we can get Silver Springs back on its feet, operating again as an economic engine, and ecotourism, and a wonderful park at Silver River out there. All those things coming together, and hopefully that's going to get done. Uh, we talked about it a lot on this show. But one of the things I've had a vision of is that I can. I would love to see some facsimile of a of a of a riverboat. It can't be a big one, I know, but I've had this picture in my mind that back. In 1854, when the Oklawaha vessel was built and came down from Jacksonville, and the Fawn, and the General Sumter, and the Emma White, the James Burt, the Silver Spring, they, they, there was a history uh, written about that period when a lot of people came down to party and celebrate at Silver Spring and to have dinner and dancing at Silver Springs. People would take the, take the riverboat down and stay. I thought, what a great thing to revive. Yep. To have that. You don't have to come from Jacksonville, but even from wherever, to come down the river and have a chance to party on the boat, get there, have dinner, dancing, and all that stuff would be a wonderful thing to return to Silver Springs, wouldn't it? It would be great. Uh, we'd have to do a lot of work on the river to get any size of any I vessel know. down there. I know. But uh, I'm, I'm of the same feelings that you are, is we definitely got to do something with the springs. It's a shame it's been uh, neglected as far as I'm concerned for yeah. the last several years, yeah. and hopefully they will get it straightened around and get it turned over to somebody that can get it straightened out, and then it will become uh, that kind of thing again for our community. Yeah, we got 30 seconds. Your favorite riverboat. Do you have some time? Well, it would be the Hiawatha. It's one of the largest ones. It was the last one. Uh, it actually went out of service in 1920. In 1930, it was pulled up on Hart's Point in Palatka, and that's where it rotted to the ground. And that's that's one of the reasons that I did this book was because it's a shame. We can go back and see old cars. We can see old airplanes. We can see trains. But you can't go anywhere and see one of these riverboats. And that's why I wrote the book, so that we could preserve some of the history. Good for you. It's called Riverboat Landing, A History of Aquatic River Steamboats. And... Uh, 
Don't forget, check it out at uh, the museum uh, on Sunday at 2 o'clock and pick up a copy of the book. Thanks so much for coming to share with us, uh, Michael. Thank you for having Mike, me, buddy. Michael Mason, author of Riverboat Landing. We'll take a break. We'll come back, and we've got sports coming up your way. We'll talk with Tom James. We'll go around the water cooler. Some new hirings in the National Football League. Is, <laughs> is there a trend going on here? I think so, huh? Canadian Football League. Well, also, and in, 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 in right out of college. Right so, out of college. So uh, it seems like it's a hot ticket going on. So stay tuned for that coming up right here on the program. Call Buddy Sports Page right here on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The Source. Bank approval. Vehicle purchase price of fixed trade allowance offers don't combine. I'm a car dealer who is feeling blue. I have too many cars and don't know what to do. If you're willing to put down a dollar or two, my misfortune can be a bonus for you. Hello, this is Chris Beers from Prestige Auto Sales, and I'm going loony. Last month I took in too many trades, and now I've got cars in spades. Plus, additional cars are arriving daily. I have no idea where to put them, and I need your help. That means this week, 27 cars must go. So if you've got the desire to drive a nicer, newer car in two bucks, you're in luck. It's my New Year Blue Year Drive for Two here sale. Bad credit? Don't sweat it. Our For the People credit approval process can help you drive away today, even if it takes some extra rhyming and reasoning with the banks to get it done. Our lot is full, and that's noble. Two dollars down is all you'll pay to drive a nicer, newer car today. I'm Chris Beers from Prestige Auto Sales, and I'm a dealer for the people. See us in Ocala or Bellevue. Or call 694-1234. See you at Prestige. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, CEO of Gateway Bank, inviting you to drop by our main office on Silver Springs Boulevard every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. for the Community Gazette, a three-hour show focusing on our favorite community to live and work, Ocala, Marion County. Come join us with the voice of Ocala, Buddy Martin, in the new old-fashioned bank radio studio as we discuss a variety of interesting topics on the Community Gazette on WOCA The Source. I'm Dawn Lovell, lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great way to get ideas ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals, located on Southwest 10th Street, just off Route 200 in Ocala and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information, call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. Hey, Larry, nice haircut. Oh, thanks, Robin. Looks like you had something different done, too. Yes, I did. Thanks for noticing. I went to Lupe at Merle Norman on the Boulevard for a fresh cut, some summer highlights, and a facial. No kidding. That's who I go to. I didn't know she did all that. She does coloring, waxing, styling, updos, microderms, and she does it all for prices that won't break the bank. Sounds like you can take the whole family there. As a matter of fact, I do. Hi, this is Lupe. Let me be your personal stylist. To set up your appointment, call me today, 426-1229. Cookies, 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 cookies. Wait, when you cookies, want something cookies, special cookies. and fun for any occasion, get cookies. That's right. The Great American Cookie Company in the Paddock Mall, Ocala, will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. You might notice that I said fun and delicious more than once. That's because I can't say it enough. The next time you're at the mall, be sure and stop by or call 352-237-2557 to place your order. Cookies, cookies, Yum. cookies, cookies. We go cookie-eating cookies. The Great American Cookie Company. 
Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar in impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Don't ever miss a single edition of the Mike Huckabee Show. We're going to have a whole lot of fun talking the big issues of the day. We'll talk to the newsmakers and the issues that made them a newsmaker, as well as we'll bring you some entertainment, some fun. You never know what's going to happen on the Mike Huckabee Show. Don't miss it. Join Mike Huckabee every weekday from noon to 3 exclusively on WOCA The Source. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Daria Albinger, President Obama is urging Congress to reinstate and expand a ban on assault weapons. It's one of the proposals he announced today to prevent gun violence in the wake of the Connecticut school shooting. He's announced 23 executive orders which won't require congressional approval. The NRA says those measures attack firearms and they ignore children. Moody's is giving higher education a failing grade. The ratings agency says even prestigious top-tier universities are under threat from dropping enrollment, government spending cuts and growing public doubt about the value of a degree. A new study backed by the National Institutes of Health finds some, some children can outgrow autism. Experts say it may have to do with the nature of the disorder a child is diagnosed with and the role of therapy and treatment. Are parents happier? A study in the journal Psychological Science finds fathers and parents between the ages of 26 and 62 were more content than their childless counterparts. This is ABC News. A po- Introducing a faster way to push to talk. AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk. AT&T delivers more of what your business needs. Instant communication, up to 1,000 contacts, plus a broad array of devices and platforms. Visit att.com slash enhanced ptt3 to get your business started with a free Samsung Rugby 3. You push to talk, we pushed it further. AT&T, rethink possible. Limited time offer, free phone on new activations only requires two-year commitment to eligible voice and data plans plus activation of AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk service. Curious? about owning physical gold? Gulf Coast Gold and Silver is offering a free guide in investing in precious metals. Over the past few years, silver has risen over 700% and gold has tripled. The time is now. Get your free guide to investing in precious metals. Call 1-800-359-1189. Again, 1-800-359-1189. Our gold advisors are standing by. How much time? 30? 30 seconds. I'm on right now. I don't believe you. Okay, okay. Enough kidding around. And now it's time for the Buddy Martin Sports Bay. He actually had me stay here last night in his gym. It's like I don't fit in. It's like I don't belong here. Let's go talk to a couple of guys that never gamble. Oh, see, I made Lewis a bet here. See, Lewis bet me that we couldn't both get rich and put you on the poor house at the same time. He didn't think we could do it. Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir, and I never slice. And now, here's Buddy. All right, welcome to the sports page. Buddy Sports Page on a Wednesday. The house is full here. Lots of people in the studio. Tom James on his way. Meanwhile, we've got uh, the usual gang, Tom, JJ, uh, Hunter, and 
Dylan, buddy. Dylan, our intern. I'm going to get it. I know. I know. It's like <laughs> like Bob Dylan, but spelled differently. Dylan, I, you know, I, I can't I can't pull it up the second time he's here, but I'll, I'll have him. Don't worry about it. I'm just helping uh, you out. I can use all the help I can get, for right. sure. That's true. Speaking of help, looks like the Philadelphia Eagles got some today, and uh, it's a question of whether or not the Chicago Bears did, but... Mm. Before we break that all down in the Around the Water Cooler segment, about 5.15 with Tom, let's talk about the headlines and sports today, J.J. All right, well, that is the main headline. He goes hired Chip Kelly. He chose not to stay at Oregon. He's a little leaving. bit of a surprise there, I think, especially well, when he said he was going yeah, back. He just said that, and you expected if he got hired, it would have been a few weeks ago when – he was supposedly in nine-hour meetings with everybody and was meeting with all these other NFL teams. So not exactly sure why he decided to leave, but he is leaving 21st coach in team history, replacing Andy Reid. Also today, the Chicago Bears hired a CFL coach. For those of you who don't know, that is the Canadian Football League. Uh, Mark Trestman, I believe his name is, but he's thir- uh, he won get two your boys, Cups. get your boys right now. He's Kane. Yeah, right he's then. a Kane, and uh, yeah. he has coached in the NFL, but it's been a while. It's a good quarterback coach. Yeah. 2006. Did you see the quarterbacks he coached at Miami, though? No. Oh, yeah. But I know all the fame. quarterbacks from the 80s so and early 90s, so I figured. Didn't he quarterback a uh, 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 Gino Toretta, a Heisman Trophy Vinny winner. Vinny Testaverde. I don't know if I put that on my resume, well, but <laughs> yeah. Well, they both won Heisman trophies. But no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. He's a very good coach. There's a him. Heisman Trophy winner from Gainesville that ain't doing too well in the pros. Ooh. Well, I wasn't referring to the pros. I was referring <laughs> to the colleges. Okay. I was his record name as a, a collegian. Name and, yeah. a Heisman winner from Florida that's ever done anything in the NFL. You can't. But anyways, well, well on the other well, hand, that was they, sort of a jab. Uh, you know? On the other <laughs> hand, they won from Miami, who has okay. So uh, oh, Warren's oh, Heisman Trophy winner. winner. Yeah, no. not none. All right, this is my favorite headline of the day. Favorite story. We got to talk about this with Tom, other Tom. USC apparently after their Sumble defeat to the six and seven. Now you mean Tech USC Yellow, as in Southern, S- Southern California. California? Make sure because when you say that, Tom James. Thinks of California. Others like Justin think of right. C. Spray. Okay, well, University of Southern Cal ended up getting into a f- quote flat out brawl in the locker room after their defeat in the Sumble a few weeks ago. Lane Kiffin, everything's blowing up. Apparently, a freshman player that's unnamed called out Matt Barkley. If you remember, he got hurt a couple days or a couple games before. The, pro, uh, the bowl game, and he decided to sit out. A lot of people think that was because, you know, he was going to the pros. He didn't want to risk injury. So some of the younger players are calling out some of the older seniors, and that turned into a flat-out brawl. But well, I have a few things to say about that. We'll just talk about later. But first of all, no freshman can just call out anybody, number one. <laughs> Not Matt Barkley. Uh, I'll, 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 having said that, I kind of agree with him. Oh, I do. Way. <laughs> and thirdly, uh, if they played like that, uh, fought like that on the field, they might have had a better success. <laughs> <laughs> they stink. Buddy Martin getting right to the heart of the issue. <laughs> one of my favorite quotes out of the story was uh, one of the younger players said, Next year, it's going to be more of a family atmosphere, and this locker room is going to be totally different. Yeah, kumbaya. Yeah, basically <clears> saying throat> Lane throat> Kiffin's going to have things turned around there. Well, it gets down to this, and we'll talk about it later, but when you talk about an athletes and elite athletes in large groups, it really has become almost unmanageable. It takes a full-time shrink right. and everything else. Uh, I mean, it's really difficult to keep these kids who are babied from the sixth grade on and told how wonderful they are to get into a reality check when they're in college to think, you're just another college football player unless you, know, you play at Alabama. What I heard Jim Harbaugh did today to his players for the 49ers pro players is he has all of their high school information and a dumb picture from like their high school yearbook no. and where they were ranked coming out of high school and he puts them on the top of their locker so everybody has to walk around and see what you look like. There's a reason they haze <laughs> rookies in, in the NFL. Let right. them know that they're nothing once they right. get out of college and they were a star. And that's this little message that goes there. Anyway, so those are some of the news stories. We'll talk a little bit about this uh, commercial. I, I thought this was the case when I saw it. What was peculiar about the commercial was Roy McElroy and Tiger Woods. We'll talk about that as well. <laughs> uh, and uh, maybe we'll get around to A-Rod's surgery. Maybe we won't. Lots to talk about on the Around the Water Cooler segment. 
Uh, get a little little hot stove baseball talk, JJ. We talked about Soriano signing. Uh, we'll update us on, on any baseball news as well. And uh, we're going to catch up with our folks out there at CFC, by the way, not today, but at CF to talk about their basketball program. Can I uh, speak? All this talking reminds me. Story broke today. Texas A&M athletic director sitting Johnny Football down, going to have a talk with him. That's he about, was at, he's front, yeah. He was front row at another NBA game last night. So the AD has said he's calling Johnny in. He needs to have a discussion about the decorum a Texas A&M Heisman Trophy winner needs to show. He's about two NBA games and one uh, casino, casino late. Casino one late, <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> this is our modern version of Joe, Broadway Joe. At worst, even Joe didn't do this at Alabama when he went there. So, yeah, he's gotten out of control for sure. And he's on that road to... Now, this is a kid already had an arrest for yeah. uh, uh, underage drinking and using yeah. a fake ID. Yeah, he, he's on that road to self-destruction, no doubt about it, that uh, he should read about a certain number of people who have gone that route and success that they've had. Anyway, uh, all that coming up next. Stay tuned for that and more right here on Buddy Sports Page. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The Source. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar in Impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. Life's journey has many ups and downs, but you can take comfort in the knowledge that Robert's Funeral Home is here to serve you and your family with loving care and dignity. The Roberts family has been providing their caring services since 1898 and offer traditional, custom, cremation, and veteran services. Pre-made arrangements are also available. Roberts Funeral Homes, great funeral homes serve great people. They've served our country. They've kept us free. And they need your help. We're sitting in Veterans Park. You can't sit here not realizing that you're surrounded by heroes. There are a lot of heroes in our community. A lot of heroes, unfortunately, are not in good financial shape. They're hurting both physically and financially. We step in and help directly. Our role is to reach out to them. We're there to help the veterans. We do counseling. We do outreach. Sometimes it's just coming into the office and sitting down and saying, hey, I've got a problem. And you're talking to another veteran who understands that problem. Everybody who works 
for the Vets Helping Vets are awesome. And they are so kind to everybody. They're like my second family. They really are. They have been there during the holidays. I have gotten unexpected visits, assistance. Vets Helping Vets of Marion County needs your help. Call today, 352-433-2320 and pledge your support to Vets Helping Vets of Marion County. It really has been a blessing. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, CEO of Gateway Bank, inviting you to drop by our main office on Silver Springs Boulevard every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. for the Community Gazette, a three-hour show focusing on our favorite community to live and work, Ocala, Marion County. Come join us with the voice of Ocala, Buddy Martin, in the new old-fashioned bank radio studio as we discuss a variety of interesting topics on the Community Gazette on WOCA The Source. Welcome back to program time now for around the water cooler segment. We got cast the thousands here with us, buddy uh, Tom, uh, JJ, and Hunter on the microphone and on the telephone. Tom James, uh, Tom, welcome. Good to be with you guys as always. How are you today? We're good, and um, I, uh, I, I think we have some folks up in Chicago who may are wondering how they are after getting the news that Mark Trespin has been hired as the coach after, what was it, nine years in the uh, CFL? So Trespin, the new head coach of the, Beer, the Bears, I'm not sure that's necessarily an upgrade. What do you guys think? Well, you know, that's I don't know if, how often that has really happened. I mean, unless that's going to be uh, start becoming a trend that uh, NFL teams start going north of the border. But uh, I don't remember the last time that happened. I don't either, now that you think about it. I don't think there's been a, you know, Stampede or Argonaut head coach moved to the NFL. I just don't, I don't remember. It. Tom. There's Alouettes. Argonauts, too. No, I'm saying this No, I'm guy. just saying, I'm just giving you Canadian football team names. <laughs> well, I mean... Uh, he won two Grey Cups. I'm not, I'm not hitting it, but the point is what Thomas says is right. You don't get a head coach no. straight from the CFL. We've had other guys, Glanville coached in the, in the CFL. Yeah, right. yep. Other guys have coached there, but never coming directly from a Canadian Football League team. I could be wrong. I don't ever recall it happening. Well, I, I know that one of the reasons, at least, that some people were speculating on is that uh, the trend in the NFL has been going to a little bit more of the wide open style that you see in the CFL, and that's why they're starting to look a little bit north of the border for a guy like Tressman. So. Uh, let me let me before somebody calls and says that the, our timing is wrong. He started a CFL career in '08, so he only had five years in the CFL. Okay, whatever. I don't want anybody calling. Yeah, I mean, I heard ESPN say nine today, so I don't know. It doesn't matter if it's five or nine to me, but bottom line is he came from the CFL. So, um, uh, And Lovey Smith, uh, by the way, said today that if he didn't get a job, he'll sit out a year. But uh, I know somebody here talked about who. which one of you guys said you'd like to see Lovey Smith hired by somebody else. Was it you, Tom? I, I, JJ? Yeah, I said he wanted, yeah. I wanted him with the Bills as a Bills fan, but yeah, didn't happen. They That's, you know, the, what do they have, two – College, co- I don't know what these what people are thinking. thinking. What's any of these NFL teams thinking with some of these stupid hires? <laughs> I think the whole Chip Kelly thing is going to turn out as a disaster in Philadelphia. I don't know why this guy's even being talked well, about as an NFL make, coach. They think he can make Michael Vick run his offense and run it good. I don't. I well, don't that know. brings up the issue of what's happening to the National Football League offenses and what we've seen before our very eyes with you know. Uh, with Kaepernick in San Francisco and in some cases other other quarterbacks who are not in the playoffs. But there's no question, like it or not, the offenses are changing. And it, it's it's morphing into something different. It may not be the, the zone read. It may not be. But there's a component of that that apparently is attracting the great minds of football. There's a reason Bill Belichick went and spent all that time uh, with, with, with Oregon and Chip Kelly. It's a reason he, he studied uh, – he spent a lot of time with Urban Meyer back four or five years ago. He knows the innovation is done not in the National Football League, but in college. Uh, I mean, look, here's, a, here's an amazing stat. You guys ready for this? I saw this today. Uh, it was a tweet I got from Pete Prisco. Take a guess where Chip Kelly was coaching 10 years ago. Anybody know? High school. Nope. He was coaching college ball. I'm no going to say, I don't know, some division 
one double A school. That's what I'd say too. And you think he was doing what? Winning titles. And we think he was a head coach or what did you say? Yeah. Okay. Offensive coordinator or something. Defensive coordinator at <laughs> Johns Hopkins. Wow. <laughs> a medical so school? <laughs> so yes. random. Where I thought yeah. they only played the other sport, which is not football. Lacrosse. Yes, exactly. Well, jo- John, yeah, and I was going to say Johns Hopkins known for their lacrosse and his yeah. offenses at Oregon kind of looked like a lacrosse team. Yeah. Good uh, point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Certainly did. So he must have been keeping an eye on their practice. Must have, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, let's go around the horn starting by, with uh, – let me, let me give you – by the way, you said you couldn't think of any coaches that had come straight out of the CFL mm-hmm. as head coach to the NFL. But, Marv Levy. From the, Maranto, from the Montreal Alouettes to the yeah. Chiefs come, and then the Bills. come right to them, though? Yeah, yeah they do. Okay, yep. well, then that was my yep. bad. Bud Grant, I've, Forrest Gregg. I know Bud Grant coached there. That was a while ago. Yep. That's I know, not, so I remember very, it. Not a very long, not a very long uh, distance to travel right across the border. For yeah, I don't there's only remember been three, it. There's only been three coaches that came right out of Canada before Mark Tressman as head right. coach in Canada into the NFL. Marv right. Levy, Bud All Grant, right. and Forrest Gregg. That's a good Grant. stat. It happened so fast we didn't have a chance to research it. Anyway, so glad we got that. Now, anyway, back to the let's go around. Let's talk about the Chip Kelly situation. Let's one at a time here and weigh in on it. I'll start by saying, there's something about Chip Kelly that people are fascinated over. I have friends. I have one very good friend who spent two weeks with Chip Kelly, actually helping Jim Kelly, you know, Chip Kelly with some of the other issues on the team. Uh, had, didn't have to do football right in, and he's very impressed with him. Urban Meyer's impressed with him. Uh, the hurry-up offense is attractive to Bill Belichick. He look, he visited with him. Uh, Chip Kelly obviously is a different kind of cat. He's uh, he's been very successful. What won twelve games? What three times in a row or something? But there's something about this I'm having difficulty with. And here's my issue: I don't see the the the, the Philadelphia Eagles running the no huddle no. without stopping and without taking a breath and just jumping up the line of scrimmage and going. I don't see. I could just see a practice where Kelly's saying, "Let's go, 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 go," and the guy saying. I got your go right yeah, here. Yeah, you know? exactly. And I don't see them doing it. Go somewhere else. Yeah, Did I just you don't see Michael see Vick doing that. No, no I couldn't no. see any NFL team right. really doing. So that's that. my comment. Let's talk. Let's go to to, to, to JJ. What are your thoughts? Yeah, like I said before, I don't think the chip. Co- I don't understand why he was even being looked at as a possible NFL coach. I understand he does good in college, but it's sort of it's because of the scheme that he runs. You know, it. I don't think it'll ever work in the NFL. The defenses are too smart and they're too fast. You don't have the big talent gap that Oregon has over most of the teams they play. And you see when Oregon does play legitimate teams, they get worked. Uh, so you're thumbs down, Kelly. I'm way thumbs Hunter. down. Hunter. Well, buddy and JJ, uh, I mean, I think that it's going to take absolutely like a great quarterback. I don't know if, if Vic's the right answer. I mean, obviously he will probably get a shot. But I was hearing today reports out of Philadelphia – you know, this this may be Vic's chance to stick around, but I, I don't I don't see him fitting in this role at all. I agree with you guys. Tom Schmitz. Look, there's two quarterbacks in the NFL that run the no huddle right now. Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. What are they? Very, very intelligent and they're field generals that make calls on the fly on their own on the field. Chip Kelly doesn't have that kind of quarterback in Philadelphia. And, oh, by the way, there's a reason there's only two quarterbacks like that in the NFL because they're special. They're elite. You don't get one of those quarterbacks but once and every so often. That's why there are only two right now in the NFL. It doesn't happen that often. That offense only can work with somebody of highly intelligence that doesn't make what the coaches want him to do. He's out there doing what he wants to do, what he's reading on the field. It's not going to work with Michael Vick, trust me. All right, Tom. Tom James. <laughs> well, buddy, I'd like I'd like to know how much time they're going to give him. I mean, it's going to take some time for him to be able to assemble the style of players that he needs to successfully pull this offense off. And uh, you know, his his whole uh, I think his motto out there at Oregon is next play, next play, just keep it moving, next play, next play. But uh, he may not have next year if he doesn't get this uh, working pretty quickly. And I don't, uh, you know, again, it, it, you know, he's going to take a little time to get the, the style of players he needs in there. So I'm hearing five, uh, not so much. Uh, well, yeah, and the thing is, why turn it? He's making three and a half, 
Three and a half million at Oregon. Money's not an issue to him. No, no, I know it's the challenge. But if you get if you get smacked in the face with this challenge, I know you can go back to anywhere and make. But you were sitting. I mean, it was Oregon. You were sitting golden at Oregon. I, I just don't understand the move by Chip Kelly. Well, there's always the next hurdle. That's the way it is. Hey, uh, uh, on a personal note. Mm-hmm. As a, on a personal note, as a USC You're fan, You're glad he's going. Great, great news today. Mm. Hey, How about also speaking, heard a great story about your speaking school, about you? <laughs> speaking of you, I've been waiting in the wings for you, my friend. <laughs> I knew this was coming. Embarrassing. Right. You know about what happened to the team and the uh, and the bowl game, right? After the yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Look, JJ, just to make sure he knows it, reread that just the lead for those who didn't hear. Oh, about I know. It. Uh, I, what you got to own up to it now. All right. Well, uh, after USC was defeated by six and seven, Georgia Tech in the Sun Bowl, there was an altercation in the locker room involving some of the younger players and some of the older players, including Matt Barkley. They called him out. Uh, you know, why weren't you playing? They questioned the team leadership, and apparently fisticuffs. Well, people commenced. who don't know Tom don't know he's a USC fan, not South Carolina, Southern California, and he has been forever, and he loves him some. Uh, some Trojans. So uh, yeah. my question to you, what do you make of that? Well, my understanding, and buddy, I know you, you have a lot of sources out there. Well, from my sources, there were no fists, there were no fisticuffs. I think that was a little bit overblown, but there were there was a little bit of shoving, and I think <laughs> it was one guy, one younger player that did question because uh, Max Wittick, the guy who did start a quarterback for SC in that game, uh, had such a tough game, had such a horrible game, uh, that one guy in the locker room did, in frustration, go up to Matt Barkley and say, thanks a lot for not playing today. Look what we got. Um, and some of the senior uh, senior players and the upperclassmen uh, started to pull him off, and then it got to be a shoving match. But uh, from what I understand, it, there, there were no punches. Well, but, where but was your head being, coach? That being said, yeah. Where, where was the head well, coach? Exactly. That being said... No excuse for that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's the kind of thing that, you know, I mean, it does happen. It doesn't usually get out most of the time. It does happen. But it's just one more thing. Uh, Barkley had a horrible year, as you know. He did get injured. But, uh, you know, once again, the team picked number one in the country. As you know, I'm telling you things you know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, his I'm dad s- his dad leaves and takes another job. Is there something that he knows that we don't know about his son? <laughs> A lot of things can change in one year. Remember, a year ago, uh, USC fans were feeling really good despite the sanctions, 10-2. and two. They beat Oregon. Uh, then the number one preseason ranking comes along, and everybody's feeling so good. Well, uh, five, six months later, it's disaster. So a lot of things can change pretty quickly. It is one season. <laughs> a lot of things have got to change back in the other direction, though, for this to uh, be saved for for Lane Kiffin, I think. Like I said earlier, what's a, number one? What's a, I agree with the freshman who called out the quarterback, who said uh, Barkley, uh, you know, didn't Should give played. full effort. And uh, I, I, I also think that the freshman keep his, could keep his mouth shut. But on the other hand, like I said, where was all that fight on the field that day? It wasn't. You know, it's stories like this that make me realize, Tom. Me and you, as a Miami fan, we can relate. You know. This kind of stuff happens at the U. Well, always. no, the U doesn't. The U doesn't have a scum. We don't bag get to go to bowl games. Stuff. Yeah, we don't have a scum. Hey, hey, hey! For me, how long has it been since Pete Carroll was there? It seems like a generation. Yeah. it was only. It's only been four well, years. So well, Pete Carroll. I, Pete, I miss him already. Pete Carroll's at home after last weekend, so you could call him, maybe commiserate with him. Ooh. Uh, well, That's- hey. Hey, one <laughs> USC coach came back. That was John Robinson for a second tour of duty. Uh, uh, hey, we can only dream. Listen, I'm not going to let him beat you up, big guy. Don't worry. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm still can't, I'm still wondering what they were thinking in Chicago. Uh, now, how many do we have jobs we have left, JJ? Uh, Arizona, bu- Buffalo. No, Buffalo Stone's has gone. gone. Yeah. Arizona, and Buffalo's gone. Chicago's gone. I think all we have is Arizona. The Chiefs uh, is gone. The Chiefs gone. Arizona might be the only Arizona's one. the only one That's left. It? And. Why someone hasn't called the Browns? The Browns. Yes. No, they have no, the Browns. Just yeah, no, they the Browns just got right. All right. There's, another, somebody, there's another household name. Yeah. Why somebody hasn't called Lovey Smith from Arizona yet and said, you know, because remember the Bears were in shambles when Lovey Smith took over there. 
So and he where, made them into ten game winners. So where do we see these head coaches? What, what do we see the trends for head coaches now? What do you see? I thought, thought go. Lovey Smith will be like number one or two. Well, take there's a certain Andy element out that doesn't, doesn't want retreads, as they quote, yeah. quote unquote. Apparently, but, but uh, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, but but you're going to get it. That's what I was going to say. I mean, these guys will be regurgitated over and over again across the country. In whether it's they stay in the NFC or go to the AFC or back and forth or what have you. I mean, we see it all the time in baseball. We see it all the time in the NBA. We even see it in hockey. And we see it in the NFL. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Yeah. Like I said earlier, innovation is done in college football. You don't have time to innovate in the National Football League. And unless you come bring it with you, you you can't invent things. You can bring something new, but you can't invent things in the National Football League. And these coaches that have these laboratories, like I said earlier, uh, you know, uh, it, it happens pretty fast. This uh, Chip Kelly was a defensive coordinator at Johns Hopkins. I mean, <laughs> it can happen to you. Somewhere out there is the high school coach right now who may be coaching the Tampa Bay Bucks in five years. Who knows? Well, it's Jaguars. The, don't forget about the Jags, too. Oh, the Jags. Yeah. Are still How could we forget about Jacksonville? Because they're it's forgettable. Easy. Yeah, it's very easy to forget. <laughs> yeah. They even have a team there. Yeah, and, and uh, by the way, uh, they can't uh, – but never, I won't, don't get me started on Tebow. That's an old story. <laughs> no, anyway, as we know it. So, all right, so we got games this weekend, guys, and we talked about it some yesterday. Uh, Tom, can you hang for a minute or do you have to go? <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm here with you. All right, well, hang for a minute. We'll come back. We'll talk about the matchups this weekend. We talked something about the quarterbacks yesterday and what we see happening. Defense usually wins in the playoffs, especially the t- uh, conference title games. We'll see whether we think that's going to happen this this weekend. Uh, on Sunday when they play. We'll talk about that next on Buddy Sports Page. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com, the source. Hi, I'm Lisa Midget with Kinetic Motion Fitness, Ocala's premier small group and personal training fitness studio. Did you know you can achieve all your fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, getting fit, or training for a personal best, all with no membership fees? Have you ever been embarrassed or intimidated at a big gym because you're not a Greek god or a size zero supermodel? Have you ever felt like your gym would rather you not even show up? At KMF, we have a team approach that focuses on small classes and personal training, and you'll feel like family, not just another number. No more boring treadmills or endless reps. Our classes are fun, energetic, and get you the results you want. And I should know, with the help of our great trainers, I lost over 100 pounds in eight jean sizes, and I did it using no heavy equipment and no magic pills, just fun and effective workouts. And yes, I did say fun. Come join us at KMF. Visit our website at kmfocala.com or like us on Facebook. Again, that was kmfocala.com. Requires bank approval. Vehicle purchase price fixed trade allowance. Offers don't combine. I'm a car dealer who is feeling blue. I have too many cars and don't know what to do. If you're willing to put down a dollar or two, my misfortune can be a bonus for you. Hello, this is Chris Beers from Prestige Auto Sales, and I'm going loony. Last month, I took in too many trades, and now I've got cars in spades. Plus, additional cars are arriving daily. I have no idea where to put them, and I need your help. That means this week, 27 cars must go. So if you've got the desire to drive a nicer, newer car in two bucks, you're in luck. It's my New Year Blue Year Drive for Two here sale. Bad credit? Don't sweat it. Our For the People credit approval process can help you drive away today, even if it takes some extra rhyming and reasoning with the banks to get it done. Our lot is full, and that's noble. Two dollars down is all you'll pay to drive a nicer, newer car today. I'm Chris Beers from Prestige Auto Sales, and I'm a dealer for the people. See us in Ocala or Bellevue. Or call 694-1234. See you at Prestige. If you want to avoid getting ripped off and put more money in your pocket, then join me, Clark Howard, every weeknight at 6, right here on WOCA, The Source. Digital Graphics Reborn, Phoenix Promotional Solutions. When you need vehicle wraps, banners, t-shirts, window graphics, you need to call Phoenix Promotional Solutions at 368-2404, 368-2404. When you need building signs, vehicle wraps, yard signs, realty signs, business cards, you need to call 368-2404, 368-2404. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, Digital Graphics Reborn. Reborn. 
Why is everyone so obsessed with virtual reality and high definition? My neighbor came over yesterday to show me the photographs he took of the pansies and dianthus that I got from Kenny's Place Nursery. He had this electronic pad, and with the flip of his finger, he showed me these beautiful shots he took in my garden. And then he said, you can almost smell them. That's when I used my finger and motioned him to the garden, and then pointing with my cursor, also known as my finger, I pointed toward the real flowers from Kenny's Place Nursery, and I said, I can smell them. Instead of virtual reality, I enjoy real reality. But it is more than the beauty of the pansies and dianthus and more than their fragrance. It's the way they move in the breeze. It's the butterflies and bees that are attracted to them. You know, the plants I get from Kenny's Place Nursery from my garden in the real world provide me with an outdoor sanctuary to escape from that virtual world. Kenny's Place Nursery is located at 7677 Southeast 41st Court in Ocala. Give them a call at 867-1213. Kenny's Place Nursery, where the plants, the people, and the mission are all beautiful. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSales.com. Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. Prices and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer charge. Undercoating rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Hi, I'm Ernie Sprantz. Join me weekday mornings at 10.50 for Report to Consumers. Consumer news you can use from your hometown station. News Talk 1370, WOCA. If it happens in Ocala, you'll hear it first on WOCA, News Talk 1370. song you know yesterday we talked about lance armstrong and i made the, the comment i'm sorry i had to mention his name today because i said last night <laughs> i was putting him into bed but this is such a parallel i can't believe it my biggest criticism of him was the fact that he, he lied and then didn't uh, didn't didn't apologize but i said also is there no honor left in this country that we could be led down a primrose path by someone like this and lo and behold, crazy. Here's a story that is just as mind-boggling, which we just heard about. At least I did, and I don't know the details yet, but I can tell you, it will blow your mind. Get this: Manti Teo's girlfriend, who allegedly died days after his grandmother did, is fake. <laughs> there was no Lene Kakua. They made the story up, according to the story on Deadspin, which I'm reading right now, which says Notre Dame's Manti Teo, the story said, played this season under a terrible burden. A Mormon linebacker led his Catholic school's football program back to glory. Teo was whipsaw between personal tragedies along the way. In the span of six hours, September, as Sports Illustrated told it, Teo learned the first death of his grandmother, about the first, Annette Santiago, and the death of his girlfriend, Lene Kakua. Kukua, 22 years old, had been in a serious car accident in California and then had been diagnosed with leukemia. That's how Pete well, Thamore. Now, now, what Deadspin is saying is this is not true. This is fake. Well, here's, they're saying that his grandmother did die. And according to the Social Security Administration rec record in Nexus, there's a death certificate of his grandmother dying. But the Social Security Administration has no Social Security number or record of death for Lene Maria Kakua that day or any other. Her passing, recounted many times in national media, produces no obituary, no funeral announcements, no mention in the Stanford, Stanford newspaper. The registrar's office has no record that Linnea Kakua was ever enrolled at Stanford. There is no record of her birth. Outside of a few Twitter and Instagram accounts, there's no online evidence that Linnea Kakua ever existed. I just Googled her. Nothing came up. It's, it, it, it seems like that this is, if everything pans out the way it is, it seems like this person didn't exist. Well, we don't have this definitive now. This no, is no, it's just, alleged. This is just what one website is saying. If true, this would be... An amazing story of fraud. If true, the question is why? Heisman. Wow. Heisman campaign. Well, Makes that's, everybody feel uh, bad for him. Uh, you know, well, you know, I mean, I, why else? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know so, if I buy into the Heisman so thing or not. But. No, it's, you'll know it's going to come out one day. I mean, maybe 
a small lie turned into a you know th I don't think this guy realized how big he was really going to get that could be JJ and it could very well be there's so much more to this program there's some pieces missing here we're not hearing everything that happened there it just can't be it just can't be this I mean can it <laughs> right I, I remember <laughs> sitting with, so weird. I remember sitting at, with the great Dan Jenkins you know who he is Tom James right. Uh, and Tom Schmitz uh, at the night at the, at the U.S. Open when the white Bronco was going around the freeway in Los Angeles. And Dan Jenkins, who was, you know, a bit of a cynic and a guy who was a great reporter in his day, whatever. And we talked about, well, what did O.J. Simpson actually do this? And Dan Jenkins said, no way. This cannot be true. Yeah. I said, Dan, it's true. He says, it can't be true. I said, it's true. Now, I'm su subjecting myself to the same kind of oh, awe saying, this can't be true, can it? Well, well, now we know that it really, O.J. did not kill her. Well, here, here's the thing. No, we don't know it's that. Here's, here's the thing. Kakua. <laughs> Stop mixing things up. Wow, here's the it. thing. I'm Kikua, just saying. Troublemaker. It's all you're Kikua doing. was reported to have died three days after Mantel Teo's grandmother. That's when the New York Post reported it. ESPN reported it happened four days after his grandmother died. And CBS reported it five, that it happened five days after. So even the New York Post, ESPN, and CBS, none of them reported you know, the same day of death. You know what's the Where best part? Where did they get the information? Well, in, a, in, any, in the case, according to a Teo interview with Gene Wojciechowski, the segment aired during the October 6th episode of College Game Day, Teo says... He spoke little Lene's uh, uh, family, and they told him her last words were, I love you. Okay, well, listen to this. This is how it really started to get out of control. CBS this morning, uh, a couple weeks ago, I think last week, ran a three-minute-long story. Oh, this morning? Okay. And they show the picture of the so-called girl that was supposed to have died. And it's not her. It's a, ca it's a California <laughs> student of another they name. They just stole her picture off her Facebook. Twitter sorry. name. The Twitter name is Love You. Uh, lo love. Let's see. Lava, love. Lava, love. Lava, love. 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 You. you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but the the picture they showed of her in a that ran on CBS three weeks is ago a fake was a picture of another girl in California that is not this girl. And it's been confirmed that that picture they used was of this girl. Charlie Rose on CBS had to go back this morning and apologize for that. <laughs> be a lot of apologizing going on here. Wow. I just can't wait to hear what Teo has to say about all this. You know? Wow. This what will, could this, he possibly say? What a story, what a story this is. Nuts. Yeah, her, her, they said the actual woman in the picture lives in Torrance, California. She was initially confused and horrified that, that she had become the face of a dead woman. She said, she said, she told uh, CBS over the phone, that's a picture of me from my Facebook account. So she didn't realize she had died, too. No, she had no idea. All right, listen Here's to this updated story. On December 20, this is updated about 20 minutes ago. On December 26, Notre Dame coaches were informed by Manti Tao and his parents that Manti had been the victim of what appears to be a hoax. I don't believe it. In which someone using the fictitious name Lene Kakua apparently ingratiated herself? I don't even know. Ingratiated herself? Got in good with her. Yeah, with Manti, and then conspired with others to lead him to believe that she tragically had died of leukemia. The university immediately initiated an investigation to assist Manti and his family in discovering the motive for the nature of this hoax. So, they're trying to say that the girl pulled a fast one on them. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, There's a kid named Rodanai Tuyasasopo. Okay, he's 22 years old. He was a friend of uh, of Taos. Apparently, he has told people, and the word comes to Deadspin, that Manti Teo was in on this whole hoax, according to this particular person. That's what I believe. Uh, and which which really makes it unbelievable. I mean, if it was a prank, it got a hand for sure. <laughs> yeah, but, he says wow. he's 80% sure that he was in on it with publicity in mind. Yeah, and here's here here's the summation of the story. See? Here it says. There was no Lene Kakua. Lene Kakua did not beat Manti Teo after the Stanford game in 2009. Lene Kakua did not attend Stanford. Lene Kakua never visited Manti Teo in Hawaii. Lene Kakua <laughs> was not in a car accident. Lene 
Ed Kukua did not talk to Matt Dattel every night on the phone. She was not diagnosed with cancer. Did not spend time in the hospital. Did not engage in a lengthy battle with leukemia. She never had a bone marrow transplant. She was not released from the hospital. Da 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 da. And yeah, finally, goes she on. says, goes on to sign and say, her funeral did not play, take place in Carson, California. Her casket was not closed at 9 a.m. exactly. She was not laid to rest. And her last words were not to Matt Dattel, I love you. <laughs> Wow. And, and, this, and here's this the is thing. Hilarious. You know, Buddy buddy and Tom, both of you know, because you've both been in the news industry and print media for years. Now that this story by Deadspin has come out, the bulldogs at places like Yahoo Sports and ESPN, and, and, and the, the bulldogs that, go, that, jump, that research these stories, will know the truth within hours. Here's well, my I, thoughts, Tom James, real fast to get your comment. Number one, Horror of horrors had he won the Heisman Trophy. Oh, my God. How about that? Wow. I didn't even think of that. How about that? And I, I bought into him. I loved the guy. I didn't vote for him, number one, but I did vote for him. And secondly, J.J. said this yesterday. He's exactly right, and it's something we all know, and you know Tom as a journalist. You cannot afford to put athletes on pedestals. You cannot because there's always holes in the story. And for what we thought was the real deal, and i got to tell you, I thought Tim Tebow, and still think Tim Tebow, was absolutely genuine article, and I thought Matt Titeo was, too. How wrong was I? If well, this comes to be proven fact. Yeah, well, obviously it, there's something going on. That's a big if. Yeah, that's a big if. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's been a lot of people, there's been a lot of reporting on done so far that, you know, there, no one can produce evidence that she was ever there. I mean, wow. uh, there, there, obviously there's more to this. Um, uh, yeah. But, but, but... I, but the, I believe that something's wrong here, my man. It's a game of separation, buddy. You know, can the guy play football? Yeah. Can he exist as a terrific, productive human being? Hey, jury's out on all those guys. And, it, you know, it's just you got to separate one from the other. Story says we call a cell, this is from Despen, call a cell phone for Manti Teo, but the number we had is not accepting calls. Brian Teo, Manti's father, was in a meeting when we called. According to a text message he sent in response, one and I, Tuliasopo, did not answer his phone or respond to multiple text messages. We left the message with Notre Dame this afternoon. We'll update with the comments when we get them. So there you go. It's amazing. Stay tuned, folks. This is going to be crazy. We'll take a break. Hey, before we go on break, breaking news, Catherine Webb. You know who that is? Yes, I do. Don't tell me she's a hoax, too. Nope. Okay. Just got hired by Inside Edition to work the Super Bowl. Here's, here's, what I gotta, here's what I got to say for Catherine Webb. Thank you for being real, Catherine Webb. Exactly. All right, thanks. Tom, you going to hang? You got to go. I, I got to run. It's All right. always good being with you guys. All right. Final All right. thoughts of any kind before you go? Go USC. Hey. Go, yeah, go, go USC. Here's a USC guy trying to defend a Notre Dame guy. How crazy is that? <laughs> Just remember that the, United, that the that USC was not the only fraud out there, though. <laughs> <laughs> Easy now, big fella. All right, big guy. Take care. We'll take a break. Return to Buddy Sports Page after this timeout on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The source. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with their clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders each month on the voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angela State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor's State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 294-2444. Recently, I had a great conversation with General Manager Pat Murray on the special events at Country Club of Ocala. 
We have a lot of uh, events, special events here that are that are geared towards the family. Uh, Easter comes to mind. We have the, an Easter bunny who hops around on the driving range. At, we usually hide somewhere in a bit of 3,000 eggs and, 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 and turn them loose and let them go harvest the eggs. We have a great family celebration here on the 4th of July where it's, it's a traditional cookout, if you will. And as, as the sun goes down, the driving range becomes alive with uh, probably one of the better fireworks displays in the, in the area. Uh, breakfast with Santa is a, big, is a big deal. Country Club of Ocala, where the Easter Bunny, Santa, and all the children, large and small, are a big deal on every special occasion. For more information, call 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of the Monday Gator Report, right here on The Source. On the next day, in Ocala Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Caitlin Friedman. She's a contributor to the Today Show, and she's coming on to speak to us about her book, Family Inc., Office-Inspired Solutions to Reduce the Chaos in Your Home. Open for debate, where both sides of one issue will be discussed. And then Hank Whittier will be in the studio bringing you veterans news, as he does each and every Thursday. And let's talk golf with James Beckett and Darren Irwin. And then Christopher Surf is coming on. He's an Emmy and Grammy Award-winning composer for Sesame Street, and he's written a book. It's called Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia Paranoica, the indispensable guide to everyone and everything you should be afraid of or worried about. Brian J. Dick is an associate professor of psychology at Colorado State University. He's written a book called Make Your Job a Calling, How the Psychology of Vocation Can Change Your Life at Work. All of that plus fun with Joe on the next day in Ocala Live right here on the Source WOCA 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. Call me crazy. Some people say insanity is doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result. I think insanity is 1,000 single-sided, full-color business cards for 15 bucks or packing service for 50% off until January 31st, 2013. Call me crazy. <laughs> Green Sea Printing on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street. 789-6683. That's 789-6683. Look for the yellow signs. Pick up your copy of Lady Lake Magazine featuring local businesses and issues and written by local volunteers. Lady Lake Magazine has become a must-read in Marion, Lake, and Sumter Counties, audited by Circulation Verification Council and serving the area for 23 years. Plus, Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. All we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 352-804-1223 and pick up your copy of Lady Lake Magazine today. Now, read. Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. I thought I had heard some, some remarkable stories, and I thought I'd heard the best and worst of everything, but this is a topper. This might be a top five of all time in terms of, again, how gullible are we in the media? We just buy it all, don't we? We just get it. We, we just eat say, it up. We want we so up. badly to be so in love with athletes and sports and whatever. And once again, we get burned <laughs> as we did by the last Great Armstrong Mormon kid. You know? Yeah, this this kid. It, here's here's my, here's, my, here's a lesson that we JJ write this down in your handbook <laughs> of life. Okay, my my grandparents told me this a long time ago, and I'll pass it along. Remember, if something is sounds too good. To be true, it, usually is. it is. Yes, that's right. Okay, he sounded way too good to be true. Now, having said that, Tebow, Danny Werfel. Man, I saw Danny Werfel talk at my church one time when I was like twelve. He he's the real deal. He's the real he deal, is. and he he's really look is. what he's, his whole life has been about that. Right, you know, and I'm just I'm shocked. I'm in shock here. I'm like Dan Jenkins <laughs> was tonight. Uh, I told him about the about the white Bronco, and I said, "Yes, OJ did it." He was shocked. I am in shock about this kid. Well, the AP is reporting that Notre Dame's tale story about girlfriend dying is reported is apparently a hoax on the linebacker. That's what I just said. Not by the linebacker. What? That's what I just said. What do you know the linebacker? How can I be on the linebacker? The, I told you the girl was trying to Notre pull Dame one over saying, on him. Right. He's saying. Notre Wait a minute. That some he girl talked lied about it. About it. it. But he's the one who said they met up. And he, confirmed he it. met her it, it after a, a Sanford yeah, game. Yeah, he's a Sports Illustrated and everything else. Y'all didn't just hear what I just read? Here what it did is. you read? <laughs> I heard you, but, J.J., a lot of things are said. All right. Now. Basically. I don't hang on your every word. No. Basically, on December 26th, 
They're trying to say Notre Dame, which I can't believe them or Manti Teo right now, but they're trying to say that the girl set it up to where they had some type of online relationship and she lied about this and that and whatever and lied about tragically dying of leukemia. How Which, she if, she, well, if she made that up, here it is. It's how did they meet here's what they're in saying. person multiple he times? Says, he time. says they met multiple, multiple times, that she used a fictitious name and, and ingrati- ingratiated herself to Teo. Come on, uh, and then, then when she got back to California, Who the hell would he do sent, that? sent messages to her supposed parents that she had died. Yeah, what kind of 22-year-old girl hoping just he, finds the time to just he, make up an well, elaborate... Well, they're saying hoax. hoping that he would, you know... Set up a foundation or something that her parent, that this girl's parents. They said it's one big con by a con group trying to get a famous oh, person yeah. to set up a foundation so that money could be raised for this girl. Well, Smells like Lucy, like, a whole bunch like of Lucy always said to Ricky, he got a whole bunch of explaining to do. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Fowler, Chris Fowler, this is a great tweet. We only got time for a minute. Woke seconds. up here in Australia and was alerted to the tail story. Truly bizarre. More to come, probably. But there definitely are explanations required. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. How do I end the day on a bizarre, bizarre note? Man, I tell you, I, I just, I don't know. How's your just, boy, buddy? I know. I, I, I did. Boy? I bought into it, man. I, I, I bought into it, so for sure. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be un. Incredibly interesting. We got to get John Finner in on the show. Oh, he's yes. he's he's as shocked as anybody right, right? now. Believe me, sure. he loves the guy. All right, it's been quite an interesting day, and we appreciate all the guests. Uh, Emily Cummins checking in here for our for Kevin on the power plant, and uh, our author friend uh, Michael Mason and his book, which the book signing is taking place about riverboats uh, on on the, the museum uh, grounds on Sunday. Uh, our thanks to uh, John McLeod, city councilman, to uh, Rick Allen, the Star Banner, for dropping by, and of course to our uh, our, uh, our our uh, friend Tom James on around the uh, around the water table. Uh, water table. Uh, around the water table. Man, the story's uh, got you tripping, buddy. It does. I'm, the story's uh, got him all messed up. Let me just say this: I want to thank everybody here on the staff, including JJ, including Dylan, including Hunter, and including Tom. <laughs> on behalf of them, I'm Buddy Martin. Have a great night, everybody.